at the Kentucky Motor Speedway, getting ready to go with the NASCAR Nationwide Series. 300 miles on this very high-speed track. Drivers and crews getting lined up for the beginning of the opening ceremony that gets underway here in just a couple of minutes. Scott Lagacy, another good qualifying run, Brad. Scott, Scott 11th. He had a great qualifying run last week. Again, this week, uh, wants to get a good finish. Got wrecked last week. Let's see if he can get up front. Ran across him in the garage area. He was so pumped. Paul Menard made the trip over from Michigan. Had some troubles getting ready to qualify, but then knocked down the eighth fastest lap. We'll keep an eye on him as the night unfolds as well. Time to go trackside for those opening ceremonies. Representing the great state of Kentucky and presenting the colors today are the 3rd Sustainment Command out of Fort Knox, the 123rd AW base from Louisville, and our partners here at the track, the Kentucky National Guard. Usually behind the scenes, but always with a lending hand to help our fans here at Kentucky Speedway, please welcome Pastor John Roberts, track minister, who will lead us in the invocation. May we pray together? Our Heavenly Father, as we pause from the excitement for a moment, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for the many blessings you give us. Father, we thank you for the freedom that we enjoy in these great United States of America. Father, we want to pray for our troops. We pray for their safe return home. Father, we pray for peace. Father, we want to pray for safety for the drivers, the crews, the fire and safety team, and the NASCAR officials. Father, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. To sing our national anthem, please welcome former Cincinnati Bengal and Super Bowl winner with the Indianapolis Colts, Ben Utek. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the Spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free. And the home of the and those who serve her, the U.S. Air Force Training Squadron from Columbus, Mississippi are on their way, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Steve Alingstar. All right, so time for the drivers to buckle in. One of them is going to take home the trophy tonight. Three of the past four years, it's been a first-time Nationwide Series winner leaving here with the hardware. Is this an upset special with a long-shot winner, or is the favorite going to stampede to the front? I like that. <laughs> the Lay it down, on. Lay it on my Next. <laughs> NASCAR Nationwide Series at Kentucky is brought to you by Verizon. Get the inside track from Penske Racing with race analysis from our drivers, plus highlights and high-speed action all on VCast and only from Verizon. Text race to 66402 now. And the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. 
How about that postcard? Race 14 of the NASCAR Nationwide Series about to get underway at Kentucky Motor Speedway on a steamy Saturday night, 84 degrees. Had some showers and some heavy downpours earlier in the day today. Obviously looks beautiful now. We are keeping an eye on the radar. And uh, there are some showers way out to the west of us. We don't expect them to get here. But then again, this time of the year, you never know what's going to pop up on the radar. Rusty's made it upstairs to join Andy Petrie and Marty Reed for the call of the race. And Marty, let's, let's start with a guy who's going to start pretty deep in the field. Yeah, and he's going to make some history if he can do it, uh, Alan. Brad Keselowski starting 25th. The thing you got to remember, no one has ever won this race starting further back than 11th. Well, I know it doesn't sound good for Brad Keselowski, but last weekend he qualified 24th or 25th, made it all the way up to the front and won that race. He had a great race last week. I really don't know why he can't do it again. Well, if anybody can do it, Brad can, but there are some pitfalls with starting that far back. You get back there in traffic and you never know what can happen in front of you, especially at this track and these races that have the younger drivers in them. You never know what can happen, and Brad probably knows that, but he's, he's pretty good at dodging trouble, but he'll have to watch out tonight. Well, Joey Logano, one of two former winners in this race. Of course, we've already documented the fact he's going for three in a row. Uh, Carl Edwards, the other former winner in the event. Let's talk a little bit about Joey because it's never been done in the Nationwide Series. Three wins at the same track from the pole position. Mark Martin came the closest. Well, you know, he hasn't won yet this year. It's probably one of the things we're going to talk about when we talk to him as our in-race reporter, that, you know, he hasn't won all year long. He's got to have his mind on this race. I think he's got to be thinking about it. He's qualified awful well. I mean, he's almost a half a second faster than the second-place qualifier. So if he's going to get back on track and win, he can do it tonight because he's got a fast car, guys. Yeah, and if we talk about uh, all the people that have beaten Joey Logano at Kentucky, it's going to be a real short conversation. <laughs> yeah, real short Nobody's right. beaten him here yet. He's the youngest winner ever in the Nationwide Series. He picked up that win here just two years ago, and there he is, the look of Joey Logano. Very confident, very sure that he has the car underneath him to make it three straight here at the mile and a half Kentucky Speedway. 43 cars in line. It is a beautiful sight with the fans still filing into their seats here at the 60,000 seat capacity Kentucky Speedway. Guess what? It's time to go trackside and let's get this baby started. And now, the most famous words in racing. You've been waiting for them. Here's the world ambassador from the Cincinnati Bengals, Dahani Joe. Well, I think DeHante's got everybody fired up. What a way as to get started. Man, what a way to start the race. All right, let's talk about the competition caution. We're going to have it at lap number 25. They just want to check everybody's tires because remember, we had heavy rains here overnight and through the morning. So they're worried about the track abrasiveness maybe creating a problem. So it's a, just a safety factor. There's your pole sitter, Joey Logano. And we'll step aside. When we come back, you'll get a chance to talk to him. Uh, maybe it's your question. Here's where he set that record on Father's Day, the youngest ever to win the Nationwide Series. He's our in-race reporter, and we'll talk to him when we come back. Well, in case you weren't with us a little earlier today, Joey Logano picked up his fourth Nationwide Series poll this season, and as we've stated a couple of times, his third straight here at Kentucky. He uh, clicked off a lap a half a second better than everybody else, 30.47 at 177 and change. His 11th career poll in just 51 starts in the series. Across the top of the screen will be our starting field and a career best start for Josh Wise and Coleman Presley, both of them junior motorsports machines. Those that didn't make the field, Brian Keselowski and Kenny Hendrick. Let's talk to our in-race reporter, Rusty. Joey, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? Four, I got you. Hey, Joey, we all know you haven't won you here this year in the, in the Nationwide Series, but you won the last two years in a row at this Kentucky race. Man, you got to be thinking about making a three in a row tonight right here. 
Yeah, we definitely got a good shot at it. This is uh, my favorite race car, and uh, I feel like we got a good shot at it. I was surprised on how fast we qualified, so uh, if we keep that speed in the, in the race here the whole time, we're going to be great. So, uh, I'm sure, track could be quite a bit different. It did rain pretty hard uh, last night, so uh, let's keep up on our adjustments here. All right, Joey, we've got an ESPN mailbag question that comes from Mary in Bloomington, Illinois. The question is, what challenges do you have traveling back and forth from Michigan to Kentucky present for both of your race teams? It's tough because it, it cuts it a little bit short on both ends as far as being able to debrief with your crew chiefs and stuff like that. makes it a little bit harder uh, because you're running and you have to go right to, uh, right to the next racetrack. But uh, it could have been a lot tougher if it rained out uh, tonight or something like that. Um, if we didn't get to race, it would be hard to get back here. So, uh, But the good thing is the sun's out and we didn't have uh, that many issues. Just a few uh, plane and helicopter rides and uh, jumping the old game stop to it and try to go three for three. All right, Joey, thanks for talking to us. Now, Andy's going to speak to your crew chief, Kevin Kidd. Hello, Kevin. Andy Petrie in the booth. You got us? Yep, got you, Andy. Hey, Kevin, uh, this track here in Kentucky is a little unique. It's fast, a mile and a half, but it's really rough. Is uh, Can you kind of tell us what the challenges are for setting up for a track like this? Yeah, absolutely, Andy. It is very rough. Uh, you know, I think the last time I was here was 2006 uh, testing cup cars, and uh, it's definitely gotten a lot rougher since then. Uh, it, it does, you know, obviously play some challenges in our setup. Uh, we we kind of have to do some compromises with shocks and springs and uh, just the overall package uh, just to get through the bumps uh, so that the roughs, you know, the ride's not as rough on, uh, on our driver and we can maintain uh, mechanical grip the best we can. Okay, Kevin, you guys are obviously very good at it. Good luck tonight, and thanks for talking to us. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the onboard cameras. You already know we have one with Joey Logano. How about with uh, Mr. Scott Rines in the number 11, then Justin Allgaier, Brad Keselowski, Eric McClure, Mike Bliss, Stephen Wallace, and Trevor Bain. And our over-the-wall reporter is going to be Mark Hollywood Armstrong, front tire changer on the 66. Hollywood, there's something special about this track. Tell us about it. Well, Marty, pit crews talk about it every time we come here. It's this very small surface that the guys have to stand on before a pit stop, and it's very hard to balance on. So this could cause some big issues tonight on pit road. Guys? We've actually seen guys holding on to the back belt sometimes to keep them from falling off. Yeah, it's like a balance beam down there. All right, well, let's talk about what's happening on pit road get the latest update dr jerry punch you're up thank you marty you know in colvin presley's debut last week for junior motorsports he spun on lap four now crew chief tony Uri senior told me you took him half the race to calm the young man down but when he did calm him down he drove like a veteran and finished a respectable 12. this is his last scheduled race tonight in the 88 car unless he makes something happen now those of you who watched his dad robert and grandfather bob drive know that when the presleys absolutely had to make something happen they did so stay tuned. Vince? Presley's teammate for Junior Motorsports, Josh Wise, was also impressive in his debut for Junior Motorsports last week. He ran all night long and finished 16th. They felt like they had a much better car than even 16th would indicate. But the key was that they ran all night long. They haven't been able to do that much in the seven car this season. They feel as though they've got a top 10 car tonight. Josh Wise qualified fourth. But the key for the team is staying in the top 30 in points. So Danica Patrick is securely in the field when she returns in two weeks. Dave Burns. Vince, Mike Bliss is in the 33 car again this weekend. And I asked Mike if he feels any pressure knowing that owner Kevin Harvick has won twice in the car this year. And he says, I don't feel any pressure to prove anything. The equipment is good. I know what I can do as a driver. They know what I can do with their car. And he proved it last week with a top five at Nashville. Jamie? Scott Riggs is making just his second start in the number 21 Richard Childress racing machine. And although he hasn't raced here at Kentucky since 2003, he was in the top 10 in final practice. And he went out and qualified fifth. The best effort for this team this year. Now, usually this race is won by a driver 25 years of age or younger. With the car he has tonight, Scott Riggs can become the oldest winner here at Kentucky at 39 years old. Marty? All right. Thank you, Jamie. As we get ready to go green, let's show you our race analysis. We're going to go around the track here a total of uh, 200 times for 300 miles. Don't go over 45 miles an hour or you're going to get busted for speeding. And you can see our pit window 55 to 60 laps. There is one streak we'd like to snap tonight. There have been a caution within the first five laps in the last four Kentucky races. See if everybody can keep it under control. We make it a little deeper. 
before we have that first caution tonight. Yeah, Great Brad, crowd on hand. Brad Keselowski is probably hoping they don't have any trouble early here, starting far, pretty far back. Well, that's some of the risk that we talked about. Pace car has turned off. Crowd is on their feet as they come out of turn number four and make their way down towards the front straightaway. This crowd coming to life, and race number 14 of the NASCAR Nationwide Series is green. Down the back stretch, everybody so far, nice and clean. Joey Logano with the Justin Allgaier right behind him. And Allgaier moved into second space, and boy, they're trying to open up some space already. Oh, we got some trouble in turn three and four. Oh, we got a car sideways, and no, it's Brian Scott. Can he keep it off the wall? He just touches it. Now, will they bring out the caution? The, seal, the, seal. the caution is out. So, okay, will well, it roll? Come on, come on. We saw a lot of racing back there, three wide. Unfortunately, we didn't make it again. Nope. Yeah, no patience back there right now getting to turn three. They tried to get it done. And remember, guys, after they got done qualifying here today, we had another rainstorm, so the track's really green right now. No grip. Looks like he just got loose. Let's take a look at the replay here. Keep an eye on uh, the 11 on the high side there. Yeah, you see it's just in a hurry. Beck at three wide off of turn two. Now, this is coming down the back straight. We into turn three. And these guys are teammates at 38 and 11 car. A Jason Leffler. Whoops, looks like they're trying to almost no. make it four wide and it just didn't work. And Jason just got up and his teammate, the 11 car, all accidental. But man, Andy, it's a lot of racing the first corner going into turn three, I thought. A little aggressive. And that is bad <laughs> when it's your teammate that attacks you out. All right, let's go on board with Brian Scott. And this is what he saw as uh, he does some damage to the back of that number 11. And that's what it looked like. And that's what it sounded like. The 2010 FIFA World Cup continues tomorrow on ESPN and ABC. The action begins on ESPN at 7 a.m. Eastern. Algeria faces Slovenia. Then at 9.30 a.m., it's Serbia taking on Ghana. On ABC at 2 Eastern, it'll be Germany up against Australia. And only one game, it can change everything. The 2010 FIFA World Cup on ESPN and ABC tomorrow. The World Cup's available on TV, online, and on your phone. Go to ESPNSoccerNet.com for more information. Back here at the Meyer 300 presented by Ritz. We're under our first caution on the very first lap. And we'll take you back once again. Brian Scott did get back out. He is uh, right now on the lead lap trying to catch up. And let's go on board again with uh, Brian. See, they've dropped down into turn one. A lot of jam up in front. You see, he's taking advantage of that. Brian Scott is. Three wide. Yeah, Brian looks like he's got an open two. track right there, but his teammate is caught on the inside right now as they get down to turn three. And watch this. Third. Three wide. With the four wide. He turned it. Hold the brake. Hold the brake. Hold the brake. Hold the brake. Just sit right there. To the seal. To the seal. Now, here is Jason Leffler. Let's listen in. Hey, I tell you, Levin, are you going to stick me three wide like that? You know, I'm not, I'm not going to lift. Uh, it's a long race, and you need to be a little more patient. I wasn't on purpose. That was a mistake, but that's what happens when you get four wide getting into turn three. Yeah, I, I don't know. I personally got a little problem with that. I would have thought if I was a teammate, I would have lifted so it wouldn't wreck both cars. But it happened, and uh, they'll, I'm sure they'll talk about it on Monday. All right, let's reset it for you. It's Joey Logano on the inside. Allgaier, Riggs in third, Sorens in fourth, Brad Coleman fifth. On the initial start, we saw the inside lane. All four cars on the inside occupied the top four spots. So it looked like on that initial start anyway, the inside lane was the way to go. Yeah, I think it's kind of a safe way around the racetrack, Andy, the bottom side of the track, knowing that they had a lot of rain out there and the second group's not burned in at all. So you got to be a little careful in the top right now. A little further back, you saw the 32 of Reed Sorensen. Now look at the battle for second heating up as the 21 of Scott Riggs gets underneath Justin Allgaier, and he's got the spot. And again, we're seeing the top three cars trying to pull away and make a little room. And they're double file behind them. It's not going to take only a couple of laps to really get a little bit of rubber on that second lane and get it cleaned up a little bit. I mean, get all the dust and dirt and grime off of it. 
And you can see right now Mike Bliss going to the bottom. You see Reed Sorensen, Paul Menard working that second lane. And right now it looks like he had some grip up there right now. I think this track, you carry the banking pretty far off the corner. The straightaway is banked about eight degrees, the front stretch. So coming off turn four, you carry a lot of that banking, and that outside lane can work for you there. Well, Brad Coleman's getting passed by Paul Menard. So Coleman, who started second in this field, said he was going to be patient, but uh, uh, has fallen back now. And now he's got the 33 of Mike Bliss taking a peek underneath, and Carl Edwards trying to sneak up into this mix as well. Josh Wise in the seven has dropped back. You see him behind Carl in that 60 car. You know, we had conversation coming into this race about Carl Edwards not showing up for practice last night and how that would affect the 60 car. He's been struggling a little bit this year, but last weekend he had a really good race, a good top five finish, and Eric Darnell set that car up, and Carl's told us earlier that, hey, I'm comfortable with what Darnell did, and right now it looks like Carl's car is running pretty good. Right behind him, a good battle going on. You've got Trevor Bain door to door with the seven of Josh Wise, and Bain looks like he's gonna be able to clear him. Yes, he does. And here comes the 43 of Scott Legacy trying to mm, tuck underneath. Couldn't get there. Yeah, really good run for Legacy. A good run for right here, Josh Weiss in the seven car and qualifying for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He proved he can get it done. Now he's just got to get this thing to the end of the race and be careful in the first part of this race. He's dropped back from fourth to tenth. How about uh, checking in on points leader, Brad Keselowski, the 22. Remember, he started 25th. He's already up to 18th, guys. Being pretty careful. I've watched him a little bit. He's just uh, kind of picking his way through these cars, taking these, you know, taking the spot whenever it opens up. You know, he flew over from Michigan last night along with Joey Logano, and these two tested their cars and got them set up the way they wanted to. Brad came back from Michigan today, got in the car to qualify, and it was very loose, sliding all over the racetrack. He told us, he says, I know I got a lot better car than that. When the track cools down, I'll get a lot better. And Andy, it looks right now, the car's much better. Yeah, it looks good, but it's going to be tougher to pass those cars as he moves further up in the lineup. Let's move further, farther forward in the field because Scott Riggs has got a mirror full of the 12 of Justin Allgaier and then Reed Sorensen right back there in fourth position. You're saying, wait a minute, where's the race leader? Oops, way up there, about two seconds ahead. And Joey Logano's trying to run away and hide from everybody. Here goes Allgaier taking a look underneath as they go down the back stretch. Can he clear Riggs this time and retake second place? Yes. And immediately, Riggs tries to duck right underneath him. And Marty, I'll tell you, when he can get up in front, and what I call that clean air, I know people get tired of hearing about it, but as you see the Reed Sorensen and, and Riggs racing side by side, Justin Allgaier got that number 12 dodge in what I call that clean air. It gives you all that downforce. And man, I'm telling you what, that makes the cars drive so much better. And that's what Joey Legato's got right now also. I watch that 12 car. He's going through the middle of the corner. Great. The last lap, he was actually faster than Joey Logano. And it, like you said, Joey Logano is definitely in clean air. Nobody around him. All right, while we've got all this, let's update you on a couple of cars. Uh, the 92 of Setzer and the 61 of Carter are both behind the wall. Scott Wimmer is a lap down already as uh, he has dropped to 41st position. And there's also more troubles for the 11 of Brian Scott. You already saw the ding in the back. That's when he crunched the wall, but we're hearing that he may have scraped the wall just a few laps ago, but. Yeah, he's all the way out of the groove. Uh, yeah, that's a little more than Ooh, a that's, scrape. Yeah, that's more than a scrape. And I tell you, if he could see what his rear spoiler looks like, he'd understand why. That thing is really laid back. Andy, there can't probably be any downforce on the back of this car because of that. Oh, gosh, that'd be it just absolutely destroyed aerodynamically there. Battle for fourth. You see Brad Coleman in the 18 trying to get underneath Scott Riggs in that 21. He's side by side through the corner. Can Coleman take the spot as they exit? Doesn't look like he has him clear yet. Let's get an update on the 21, Vince. Well, this is a big race for Scott Riggs. This is his last of a two-race deal on this 21 team, and they're running very well, but they just don't have the funding from Riggs' perspective to continue on with this team. So Scott Riggs told me tonight, he said, they're racing for sponsorship. I'm racing for my career. I wouldn't expect Riggs to leave anything on the table tonight here at Kentucky. And we're very early in this race right now. And look out, we're hearing word that Carl Edwards has slowed all of a sudden. Yeah, about three or four cars past Carl Edwards in three and four and down the front straightaway. Now we see two more 
uh, just kind of filing by this 60. Don't know what the problem is. Uh, Dave, do you know what the problem is with the 60? Yep, Carl, uh, radio on lap eight, super loose for the 60 car and just a little bit tight in the center of the corner, but mainly loose was what Carl was complaining about. Well, Brandon Gaughan's going underneath him right now. He's going the wrong direction. Well, I'll tell you guys, we talked about this earlier in our show. I really think he needed to make the effort and get over from Michigan over here to get this car handling better, and now he's paying for it. I'm not sure. He, he, you don't think he may have something wrong like a flat tire because this is he's really slow. Well, he really could have. What's it look like in times right now? Almost about a second off the pace, but he's loose. He's all over the place right now. The car's not handling. Could be a right rear tire. We can't see that from here, but could be. He's screaming loose. Scott Riggs, is, meanwhile, has got his eyes full yeah, on the left side like of Trevor Bain. On the right front into three, and then just slam down, pitch it sideways. That's still Good Carl point. Edwards' radio, giving you an idea of what the problem is. He's trying to diagnose it for the crew. Meanwhile, Trevor Baines side by side again with Riggs. That is a battle for seventh on the racetrack. Here comes Josh Wise as he's trying to work his way back up. He started fourth, drifted back to tenth. I'll tell you, Trevor's going the right direction. He had an early draw in qualifying. The car got slipping and sliding on him, and he didn't qualify that good, but we knew that he had a good race car, and now it's starting to get through the front pretty easy, to tell you the truth. So Josh Wise still side-by-side side with the 21 of Riggs. Let's also update you. Setzer, Carter, now Danny O'Quinn is behind the wall. And boy, Carl Edwards is still having all kinds of problems. He has dropped back to 19th position, guys. Now 20th as Brian Eichler has gotten past him. You got to believe that on lap 25 when a mandatory caution comes out, that these guys can get down pit road, get yeah, the same really, fix. We might raise the hood, just look at everything. It feels like maybe a control arm is broke or loose or something. It's, it holds itself up, and then it just falls on its nose and slides loose. Sounds like, honestly sounds like he's got a sway bar issue. Maybe a sway bar link has come loose when he goes down in the corner. It just doesn't have anything to hold it. Well, can they wait till lap 25? Well, I mean, they, they don't have a choice, really. They're just going to ride it out if it'll, if he can stay on the racetrack, try to stay on the lead lap. All right, we'll be back for that competition caution. It should be right around lap number 25, according to NASCAR officials. Joey Logano right now leads by 1.8 seconds, but we know that's going to go away. What we don't know is, can Carl Edwards get his car fixed? Our second caution here at the Meyer 300, presented by Ritz, and it's uh, be the 11 of Brian Scott got turned around on the back stretch. More on that in a moment, but this will be the competition caution. So even though it is a few laps earlier, let's go with the uh, triple pits and uh, Dr. Jerry Punch, you're going to be up first. Ray Swords and pitting at the upper end of pit road. There's Josh Wise in the middle and Justin Allgaard down at the bottom. They're going to be two tires only though in the Toyota for Reed Swords complaining of needing front grip. They're going to change air pressure in the front. Vince. The seven of Josh Wise said it started out a little free, started to tighten up, but he liked it. They're going to put a little more air in the right rear and Sunoco fuel. Two tires. Jamie. Justin Allgaier said he was tight early. That is not a good thing as the cars get tighter as the evening goes on. Four tires, air pressure front and back, Dave. Joey Logano, the leader, will take four tires. His car just a little bit tight. They will uh, raise the track bar just a little bit for Logano. Meanwhile, Carl Edwards on pit road. They're going to put a pound of air in the right front. They're going to uh, put the track bar down four rounds to try to fix that car without changing anything. And they'll get a look at it here, and we'll see if we can get a further update on Carl's situation. Well, you saw the problems that uh, Justin Allgaier's team had a 15-second stop, and uh, of the three in the triple right pits, it was the worst. Yeah, I talked to Justin right, good, Allgaier. Good, good job. Uh, now, let's go back and show you why we are under this second caution. We mentioned the fact it was Brian Scott, and it's been a rough night for him, and we're only 22 laps into this thing. Okay, yeah, see, he comes off a of turn two right here, and his flat and loses it. Hey, you're coming up on his 11 right by his side. Stay but up, now, stay up, stay up. You're all out clear. The thing, out, no the thing he doesn't realize is that the rear spoiler on that car is almost broke off. It's laying almost flat. That creates no downforce. That car is sliding all over the place. And he's probably thinking, hey, I got a little damage, but he knocked it up just now a little bit, so it's probably going to help. And you can see they're back in and trying to give him some of that much-needed downforce. A tough night, as we mentioned, for Brian Scott. But so far, a great night for Joey Logano.
Just going back to green flag racing, it's Brad Coleman who took no tires. Sorensen, Bliss, Wise, Logano, Legacy, Allgaier, Annette, Menard, and Presley. That's your top ten. You're saying where's Scott Riggs? He got busted for a loose tire outside the pit box. He started at the rear of the field. And look at Josh Wise. He is being swept up quickly there by Allgaier and also the 43 at Legacy. Yeah, he got caught in the center right there. Did a the smart thing by just getting back to the bottom of the track, getting out of the way until that thing gets back going again. Seventh race in his career that Brad Coleman has led. Josh Wise would love to get up there and taste that front row as well, but he's got his work cut out for him. Here comes Paul Menard underneath Michael Annette in the 15. Right behind them is Stephen Wallace. All four position. That is eighth, ninth, and tenth. On board with Steven. He got a mixed decision of what happened here. You got two tires, no tires, gas only. A lot of stuff like that now. Battle for fifth on the racetrack. You've got Allgaier and Legacy. And right behind him, Josh Wise. Right in front of them is Joey Logano trying to work his way back up. What's the latest on the seven, Vince? Well, Josh Wise came on the radio right after that restart, and he dropped a few positions, and he said, the car just went away from me right there. He said, I don't know what happened. He said, I'll try to get back on the horse here. They liked their car in the middle of the run as it started to go during that first stint. Felt it was a little too loose early on, but keep an eye on the seven of Josh Wise. He seems to think that uh, maybe once they got through that restart, it'll be a little better. We'll see. And we're hearing it uh, on... The 60 of Carl Edwards. We finally found out it was a flat tire situation. That yeah, right rear tire was down. That definitely caused all the problems he was uh, describing and kind of explains why he dropped so far back. Let's also update you now that uh, Mark Green has pulled it behind the wall. So Green, O'Quinn, Carter, and Setzer are off the track. Joey Logano right there. He has got a mirror full. He's got uh, Mike Bliss right behind him. He has now moved into third. He is starting to work his way back to the front. Did not have the best of pit stops. Seems like Rusty said a lot of people did different things. He had two tires and uh, some people didn't take any. Uh, a lot of cars took four. Joey Logano took four. Uh, Brad Keselowski took four. And uh, you know you, those guys are thinking that maybe those tires will come into play later in this run. Battle for ninth. You've got Stephen Wallace and Paul Menard. You know, Marty, we talked earlier about this race hasn't been one farther back from the 11th place. You got to believe that these drivers are hearing that. And they know those stats. They want to get these cars in the top 10 because it is very hard to pass at this racetrack when you get way back. These front ends take off. They start pushing and slipping and sliding. It's tough to negotiate this bumpy track. Been a lot of action going on throughout the middle of this field as well. And now it's finally starting to settle down. You're saying, where's Brad Keselowski? Well, 15th right now. There he is, the 22, just on the right side of your screen. He's got going underneath another car trying to get around. That would be uh, Brendan Gaughan, his next target. And the 16 is further back. See Colin Brown right there. Colin Brown needs to have a good run right now. Needs to keep this car in the racetrack. Don't get it in a wreck. It's happened before to him. He's been out for a while. He's learned a lot. Listen to Matt Kenseth and a lot of his teammates. This needs a good solid run tonight. A good thing for him to do right now would be to let this 22 car go. Follow him. You know he's going to the front. He's doing it in a methodical way. Can learn a lot right here at this point of the race. Let's get an update on Keselowski, Vince. Similar to what we saw last week at Nashville when Brad Keselowski started 24th and drove through the field to win that race. Keselowski said on that first stint, the car just kept getting better and better the longer they went. That's good news for the 22, maybe bad news for everybody else. They didn't make any changes on that car during that first stop, just four tires and fuel. They also had the fastest four-tire change of anybody, 13 and a half seconds. So uh, big crew doing their job. So Keselowski in 14th, gone right in front of him in 13th. Colin Brown behind him now in 15th position. You see Brad really working the steering wheel, and if you watch this car, it looks like it's real harsh over the bumps. Looks like it's fast, but it looks like it's uh, it's difficult for Brad to drive. He's doing a great job with it, though. You know, you think about this racetrack right now, there's only a couple things to do. You either go under the bumps, through the bumps, or around them. And I think when the track starts rubbering up, you're going to see a lot of guys running the high line, especially in turn three and four. Closest battle we have going on right now near the front is for fourth. Mike Bliss has the spot. Justin Allgaier is closing in. Let's get an update on the 33, Dave Burns. And Marty, what they wanted most after that round of pit stops was clean air. They had intended on not taking any fresh tires at all. 
but there was a little bit of a snafu on pit road, so they ended up taking two. That cost them a little bit of time, so they still haven't had a chance to see what that car will do out front. It's good and balanced, but look for him later to try to get him some more track position. Well, he's maintaining station right now in front of Justin Allgaier in the Verizon Wireless Dodge. And our Verizon Wireless customers can text CHAMPION to 43776 for exclusive CHAMPION chats, content from our NASCAR Now roundtable of experts. 35 laps are complete. And we've got Stephen Wallace taking a look underneath Michael Annette. That's for eighth position on the racetrack. And while this is going on, we'll tell you that uh, Reed Sorensen's lead is now 1.5 seconds as Stephen clears for the position. You see how bumpy that track is. Those cars just jumping all over that thing. But I do see him working the top side a little bit more. Jamie, what's the 66 saying? Well, so far, so good, Rusty. Both of the RWI cars, same same setup, actually, is what they came in that last pit stop. They both opted to do a track bar adjustment. Both cars are tight, but they are moving forward. Stephen Wallace started 16th, running ninth right now. The car has been good. Communication is good, and he's going forward. And on the left side of your screen, so is Justin Allgaier as he's trying to take away fourth place on the high side around Mike Bliss, and I think he's got him, yes. And that's a powerful move right there, just right around the outside. So move Allgaier to fourth, Bliss to fifth. It is Sorensen, Coleman, and Logano, your top three. I tell you, I know we talk a lot about, about uh, Justin Allgaier and this Penske team, but man, it has been night and day difference from last year to this year about how much better they're performing. The cars, good pit stops, a lot of horsepower. New year for them, that's for sure, Marty. Give you a perfect example. Between the two Penske's cars, they have completed every lap of every race, but just one. And right now, you see where Allgaier is in fourth and his teammate Keslowski in 13th and moving forward. But it's Reed Sorensen in front after 38 laps. Welcome back to the NASCAR Nationwide Series here at Kentucky. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. With 44 laps complete of 200, the 32 of uh, Reed Sorensen, our race leader. He led 15 laps last week. His first laps led a 2010, and now his first time ever leading here at Kentucky. He is our fourth different leader. We've had a total of three lean changes. We now have a total of Chase Miller, Mark Green, Daniel Quinn, Carter, and Setzer out of this race. Moving a little bit further back in the field, we pick up uh, Paul Menard and Mr. Presley. Coleman doing a nice job right now. He's got a lot of pressure on the double duty driver in the 98. Yeah, I definitely want to give a shout out to Coleman Presley, Andy. He's looking awful strong right now to me. Yeah, he did, took two tires that last pit stop. Uh, the 98 car took four, so he is, uh, he looks pretty good right now because he's able to keep pace and actually put pressure on Paul. Coleman can outdo dad back in 2004. Robert started here just the one time, 21st in his only start at Kentucky. He finished 16th that night. Let's get an update on the 98 of Paul Menard. Dave, what are you hearing? Well, Marty, uh, in countdown, Allen referred to the fact that he had some issues in qualifying. The car actually wouldn't fire, and they didn't take their assigned spot in qualifying. They had to come back down pit road for a quick check. When he went out, he switched ignition boxes, and that seemed to help. Let's go to the Craftsman Tech Garage and Tim Brewer. Tim, what's the procedure for a driver to switch ignition boxes on the fly? Thanks, Dave. That's a pretty good question. The driver has a switch right here on the dash. You see primary ignition system. When he flips it to the backup system, he actually changes the coil, the ignition box. But what we have in addition to that, we've got two pickups in the distributor right here. The distributor sets in the front of the engine. But when you change the pickup point from A to B, you also change how the engine is fired. So you're changing the entire system in the car. Tell you what, that's, a, that's pretty doggone slick when you can do that. Change that much, the coils, the ignition boxes, the distributor. Pretty well isolates all the problems. It's almost like an airplane has two, two ignition systems. The only thing that a race car doesn't have is two sets of plugs per cylinder. Only one set of spark plugs, but two completely separate ignition systems. Well, if you want two spark plugs, we could do that in drag racing. Top fuel in a funny car. They'll do it over there. All right, let's uh, take a look at Eric. You see Coleman Presley, where he started ninth, currently running 11th. Vince, what's the latest? 
Well, he's lost a couple of spots, but that's not necessarily a negative situation. They're pretty happy with the race car. Said it was a little free in the center during that first run. But more than anything, they just want Coleman Presley to get the experience. You see the car coming in on the inside of him now. But in that 88, this, this team, this junior motorsports team, was so impressed with the way Coleman Presley ran at Darlington. As you see Brad Keselowski pull up alongside of him now. But uh, with very little experience, Coleman Presley did a great job at Darlington, brought the car in, Pops Yuri said didn't even have a mark on the right side of the car. And you can do that at Darlington. You're a pretty good race car driver. We wanted that guy in our car. Not sure how many more races Coleman Presley's going to get in the 88, but he sure has been impressive in the two opportunities he's had. Well, the guy that used to drive the 88 just went around him for 11th. Let's move farther forward. And we can see Josh Wise under attack from Stephen Wallace. This is for 7th. Now, Stephen finished 8th last week, so it looks like... Some of those changes uh, you and the team made are paying some dividends. Well, Brad Doherty was talking earlier in our countdown show about testing. We just started doing some testing, and it's helped both of these cars. I mean, there's a limited testing available now. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with it. I think these guys got a little more need a little more freedom. But, man, whenever you get on the racetrack and try some things and you're not in competition, it's just uh, a better deal. And so far, it's working well, for us. Well, let's also be honest. I mean, you made some personnel changes as well. Yeah, I've made some personnel changes a little bit. And uh, one thing I had fun with, I got to drive the car. That was pretty cool. <laughs> well, Josh Wise, you see him there going underneath Robert Richardson Jr. in the 23. And uh, Steven pulling away from Josh right now. And uh, Wallace safely ensconced in seventh place. Now we're getting a little more interesting towards the front because Joey Logano is reeling in his teammate Brad Coleman. Remember, Coleman did not take tires on that competition yellow. Yeah, they had 20 laps on these tires from the start when they had that competition yellow. So, uh, yeah, the tire wear is good here. It's pretty even left to right. And, uh, yeah, the, the speed holds up well. But I think over a long run, somebody that has four tires can definitely overhaul you, you know, at the, at the end of the run. And this is a complete different tire than these guys raced here last year. And all the drivers seem to like the tire. It's the same four tires that they raced at uh, Dover, Delaware. Pretty good combination of tire. And But Joey Logano did tell us when he got here, he said, hey, this car is driving different. We had to change some things to adapt to this new tire. If you look on the right side of your screen, there's the 22 car, Keselowski. I'm watching his lap times, and they are some of the fastest that I've seen. I think he's going to be one to deal with. You see the pass there for second. Yeah, I still think you're going to have to deal with the 20 before you go to any place else because he just went around to take over second position from Brad Coleman. He is 2.9 seconds behind the race leader. Meanwhile, Keselowski looks like he is going to be moving into the top 10, and yes, he has. Yeah, he's got a good car, too. And now, talking about Keselowski, he came over yesterday. We talked earlier in the show about this also and tested this car, made the effort to come from Michigan all the way down here to Kentucky. Not a big, long way, but get in this car to get it to his liking, and I think that's very important. Definitely shows the commitment level. So he is moving quickly and looking at Michael Annette as his next potential pass. There is the race leader all the way over there, the 32 of Reed Sorensen. He's got a 2.7 second lead after 55 laps. Does Reed pick up the win in the 32 tonight? Stay with us to find out. Another classic NBA Finals between the Celtics and Lakers continues Sunday night with Game 5. This is the last game in Boston before they head back to L.A. to decide it. Tied it to a piece. Celtics look good. I'll tell you what, I think they might get those uh, L.A. Lakers. Critical Game 5, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ABC, Sunday night. Coverage begins with GMC Sierra NBA countdown at 7.30 Eastern. Here at Kentucky Motor Speedway, we are just past the one-quarter mark of tonight's 300-mile race, and Reed Sorensen is out in front. Uh, track position apparently going to be king tonight, Brad. Yeah, I agree with you, Alan. You see Joey Logano has yet to get back to that number one's position that he held uh, early on the race, led 22 laps. Once we had pit stops and Sorensen was able to get out front, uh, he has not been able to pick that back up. Scott Riggs had a penalty on pit road, and uh, he's going he's gonna to go a lap down. He has not been able to make the room back up as well. Tough, tough, tough. He is a lap down. Tough to make up that uh, track position. Remember, Logano got shuffled back by others' strategy on the first set of pit stops, which came back at lap 22. Uh, Logano trying to reel in Sorensen now as we take you up to speed for an update on some of the front runners. In the leader's pits is the doctor. Thank you very much, A.B. You know, last week in Nashville, after the final practice session, everyone, including many of us, thought Reed Sorensen would be 
the guy to beat. But unfortunately, the car would not respond during the race. It was too tight. Track bar, wedge, air pressure, rubber in the left rear. Nothing would help the car. He settled for a seventh place finish tonight on lap 25 competition yellow. He said, I need a little bit more front grip. It made an air pressure adjustment in the right front. And now Reed says the car is perfect. Dave. Doc, for defending race winner Joey Logano, this is the difference this year. Goodyear brought an improved tire to the racetrack. But as you talk with the teams, there are adjustments to be made to this better tire. Kevin Kidd, the crew chief for Joey Logano, told me that the notes that they had for the last two wins, well, they're very good notes, but they don't include this tire. And it affects what they do so much that they really had to adjust this weekend. And obviously, they made good adjustments. Jamie? And Brad Coleman in the 18 behind him in his second of seven races. Now, he says the car is getting better. It's coming around, but he is still on those old tires, so he is getting a little tight. He has a new spotter up high. That's Curtis Markham, Denny Hamlin's cup spotter. So the two are working together and doing a heck of a job as he navigates around traffic. Behind him, Justin Allgaier. His crew chief, Chad Walter, missed practice yesterday for his son's graduation, but he made it back in time to be on the box here tonight. The car is getting a little bit aero tight and loose in. Dave? Running fifth is Mike Bliss, Jamie, in that 33 car. Remember, they only took on two right side tires during that first pit stop, and Mike radioed into his crew that he needs to be a little bit freer. However, he feels that when they put on four tires that have never been used before, that's going to fix the condition. For Ernie Cope, it's a challenge now to figure out if that changes over time here as this run goes on. Jamie? And Stephen Wallace has moved up to sixth. He started 16th, already gained 10 positions. Says since the last pit stop when they made that track bar adjustment, the car is great now in one and two. He's still a little bit tight in three and four. Remember, Stephen Wallace won an ARCA race here back in 2006. He knows how to get around here, Doc. Indeed he does. And back in seventh spot, Scott Legacy in the 43 car. And according to the team, and Scott this afternoon, as he tries to hold off a 22 car of Brad Kozlowski for position, this could be the final race for quite some time for the year for Scott Legacy. Nothing scheduled after tonight. He thought he would have a top five last week at National Park of being involved with another car and finishing in the garage area. He needs a top five finish tonight. And if he does, he's going to have to hold off that 22 car, Vince. Well, that 22 is Brad Keselowski. He was the winner last week at Nashville. He's the current points leader as he goes to make the move underneath the 43. Keselowski says the car is not good at the start of the run. He said it's really fighting the front. They think maybe because of the low air pressures, but it gets better as the run progresses. Believe it or not, he says, I'm just being patient, but he's picking up a lot of cars as patient. Alan. All right, Vince, thanks. So an update on the uh, front runners at this point, and Keselowski continuing to chip his way toward the front. Joey Logano continuing to chip into Reed Sorensen's lead, but still one full second between the number one and number two position drivers at lap 70 of 200. The NASCAR Nationwide Series from Kentucky. We're coming back in a minute. Reed Sorensen is out in front of this one. You see what's happened to Willie Allen. We are under our third caution just happened moments ago here at Kentucky Speedway as we have completed 74 of 200 laps and Willie trying to get back to pit road but it's not going to matter whether he does or doesn't. That car is. Hold up, wounded. hold up, hold up. Cut it off. We don't want to tear the motor. Finished 15th last week after being two laps down. Let's take a look and see what happened guys. Let's follow these guys down in the corner. Looks like Willie's getting ready to pass the 99 a Bane but he just gets in a little deep touches the left rear of Trevor's car and spins and man oh, I hate man. that this is a, a guy needing a break a good driver qualified good for this race and having a good run Go yeah lead lap. here come the leaders well here come the race leaders to pit road and we're going to start things off with Dr. Jerry Punch all right guys uh, we're going to have Toyota Dodge Toyota to lead 32 22 18 swords on top of your screen they plan a four tire change no other adjustments he said the car is just that good they'll top it off with Sunoco fuel Vince the 22, Brad Keselowski says it has a little bit too much bounce on the short run, sliding the front. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. It's going to be a four-tire change for the 22. Jamie Little. And Brad Coleman has been anxiously awaiting the arrival of four new tires, filling it up with Sunoco fuel, and no adjustments is the call, Dave. Joe Logano running second. They will make a track bar and wedge adjustment, air pressure as well. The car was tight and getting tighter, but you know what clean air can do for you? He wins the race off of pit road. So Joey Logano gets off pit road first. 
with the Brad Coleman close behind. And here comes everybody else out of pit road that were on the lead lap. A total of uh, 21 cars at the time at this third caution came out here at Kentucky Speedway. We'll set things for you and reset the field. Right now, though, it looks like Joey Logano has retaken the race lead here at Kentucky. There he is out front. Under our third caution here at Kentucky Speedway after Willie Allen tagged the wall between turn three and four. Our Aaron's lucky dog is going to go to the 04 of Jeremy Clements. That'll give us 22 cars on the lead lap. Down one lap, surprisingly, is Scott Riggs. Remember, he got penalized last time. Well, we had a penalty for the 99 that we're hearing about. And we, in fact, we had all kinds of action during this last round of pit stops. Let's go over the wall with Hollywood Armstrong. He had to fill a little five-hour energy in him there. Good, good job for Hollywood. You can see that uh, Stephen Wallace is now up to sixth position. Two penalties. We mentioned the one on the 99. They had a rolling tire outside the box for Trevor Bain. And the 40 also had equipment. Jeff Green as uh, they are going to go to the rear. Seven cars are now out of this race. We can update you. Morgan Shepard, Kevin LePage added to the list. How about an update on Carl Edwards? He has fought his way back. There's his cycle all the way back as far as 31st on lap 26. And right now we find him in the 14th position. Let's reset it for you. It'll be Joey Logano up front. And then it's Brad Coleman, Reed Sorensen, Justin Allgaier fourth, Mike Bliss, Stephen Wallace, then Brad Keselowski seventh, Josh Wise eighth, Paul Menard ninth, and Michael Annette rounds out your top ten. Pace car has pulled down. Flag in hand at the start finish line. And we're just waiting to go back to green flag racing here at Kentucky. And a good jump for Joey. Reed Sorensen, who was the leader before the round of pit stops, came out in third. Looks like he's trying to take over the second position away from Coleman, but Coleman's having none of it. Yeah, Coleman's not going to give it up. He, he's getting better and better at this racetrack. Now, take a look at Coleman on the outside of that racetrack. Right behind him is Reed Sorensen. He's got a good run, too, but Justin Allgaier has been strong throughout the night. Whoa. Down on the apron for Justin Allgaier. And he gets around, and all of a sudden, as we go to the right side of your screen, keep an eye on the 21. We had reports of smoke out of the 21 for Scott Riggs. Yeah, you see the left front fender is caved in. On that restart, you can see it right at the start-finish line. He had to jump out of line like somebody didn't go in front of him, and he got a little damage from it. And we'll keep an eye on that, see if it's fine. Let's watch the restart on the right side. Uh, this is actually after that. He, he pulled out a line at the start-finish line, made it three wide. See right there, he pays the price for it. He did pull back. He got a warning. He will not be further penalized because he immediately gave the position back. And yeah, that's the key thing. He pulled out a line, and NASCAR would have penalized him had he not given it back. Here comes Brad Keselowski. He has gotten around Stephen Wallace now. Move Brad up to six, Stephen back to seven. There's Michael Annette in that 15. He's having a good run tonight. He sure is. As uh, he is fighting hard, a 31.8 second lap last time around. That's uh, right with. Stephen Wallace and the guys right in front of him. And that got his first top 10 in the nationwide series uh, in this race last season when he finished seventh. But I always like watching these restarts. These guys got real low air pressure in these cars. Some of them are sliding all over the place until the air pressure comes up. And some of them can really get going fast. And those guys there, those are the ones I'm looking at in these short runs, especially if we get a green-white checker, stuff like that. Who can get going and who can't? 
There's your race leader, Joey Logano, and the long line following him. And Carl Edwards, we can tell you, has poked his nose into the top ten. Here is a great battle. You got Michael Annette with Menard, and there is Carl. That is for eighth, ninth, and tenth, with Josh Wise just hanging on the doorstep there in 11. Yeah, almost a disastrous start for Carl Edwards. Had that right rear tire going down and uh, went way, way back, but he's moved his way back, up, like I said, up into the top ten and uh, looking for more. Yeah, I was watching Carl's lap times. It looks like they're pretty respectable. I mean, he's not way off right now. And one thing I'm noticing, Andy, that we got the lights are on at this racetrack all around it now. You got to believe the track's cooling down a little bit, but man, it was hot today. Humid, sticky, nasty, everything. And I hope the track cools down a little bit. If it does, these cars are definitely going to start handling better. Yeah, and the speeds are going to come up. You'll see you see sparks flying out of some of them. You might see more of that as the speeds pick up. And you also may see some cars that maybe weren't so good when the track was hot and slick get better as the night goes on. Right now, that front pack of cars, the top five, sort of pulled away a little bit from the group behind them. Here, that battle continues with Michael Annette and Paul Menard. And here comes Carl again trying to tuck up underneath. But as they head down the back stretch, Annette and Menard sort of sort things out, pull away. And boy, going into three, Carl really falls back. Now the car looks a little bit uneasy going at the corner. Looks like he doesn't have the confidence he needs. Generally, a, a car that's too loose uh, will cause you to do that, get out of the throttle early. But he really gets up off the corner, Will. He's backing off early, getting off the corner. The 60 car looks pretty good, Dave. Andy, to Rusty's point, he is a little bit uneasy about that car. After the last round of pit stops, it was so twitchy in the rear end, he called it shaking. He did ask, as he makes this pass now on both Annette wow. and Menard, he asked if the cars, uh, if the lug nuts were all tight. Drew Blick and Surfer, his crew chief, checked with all the guys. They all said yes and that it would be okay. After this last run, the car was just a little bit loose still. They made an air pressure and track bar adjustment, but it's been an adventure for Carl, now solidly in the top ten. Doc? Give a call to Michael Annette in the 15 car now getting a challenge in the 7 car on the bottom of the racetrack. Annette started 26 tonight. He did not take any tires on the competition yellow to get himself up in the top 10. They made a four tire change there just a moment ago and he has been hanging 8th, ninth, and 10th position hoping to be able to get another top 10 finish like he did here one year ago. Thank you, Doc. And great racing going on between those guys. Sort of has calmed down for the moment. There's the 62 of Brendan gone. He is right behind Josh Wise in 12th position. A little further back is Coleman Presley is now in the 13th spot. And there you see Coleman and then the rest of the group coming around as well. Haven't missed anything up front. In fact, let's check in a little bit farther forward because uh, Mike Bliss has got a mirror full to 22. Here comes Brad Keselowski. He has been slow and methodical about coming to the front. I think one of the reasons, just like Rusty said, some of the cars are running on low air pressure, some lower than others, and I think it takes him just a little bit longer to get going. What's he saying down there, Vince? That's that's exactly right, Andy. In fact, Keselowski said it feels like the first couple of laps that he's got a bunch of flat tires, he said, but it gets better every Every single lap and once it gets going he really likes his race car as mentioned they made no changes on that last pit stop and if he can just get through those first couple of laps at the beginning of this run Brad Kay is really happy with his car so the longer the run the better for Brad Keselowski on the left side of your screen Carl Edwards is enjoying some newfound life as he has got door to door action going with Stephen Wallace and that is for seventh on the racetrack give the position to Carl he too coming forward that looks like Carl's made some good decisions on his tire pressure and what they need out of that number 64 to get it to the front because I'm watching his lap speeds and they're pretty doggone good right now. He's, he's probably right where he wants the car, real close to it. Check in on the battle for second position. Brad Coleman has it. Justin Allgaier would like to take it away. Allgaier takes the low line but uh, doesn't have a good enough run. You see every now and then a little glimpse there in the foreground is the race leader Joey Logano. You got to really hand it to Brad Coleman. He doesn't race in this series regularly. Although we know how good this 18 car is. He's still got to get in there and make it happen and he's doing a great job behind the wheel of this thing tonight. Did a good job last week. Uh, it's just got to be hard to do not racing any more than he does. Well I totally agree with you and just like Kyle Busch said last week in his interview he said you know uh, Brad did a pretty doggone respectable job and he did. He didn't tear the car up and is looking really good tonight. Take a look at the right side of your screen. Brendan gone and Josh Weiss going at it. That uh, battle right there is for 11th on the racetrack. And you can see that Josh Wise has that position. 
Meanwhile, as you look further, you can see that we have little packs of two about every other grouping. As uh, here comes the 22 of Brad Keselowski looking underneath the 33 of Mike Bliss. So Keselowski moves into fifth position after starting 25th. He is 2.7 seconds behind, but he actually ran his last lap quicker than race leader Joey Logano by a tenth. Before this is done, this is going to be very, very interesting. Joey Logano looking to win three in a row here. Brad Keselowski looking to dominate the points championship. Who's going to be the winner? Stay with us to find out. We're not even. Welcome back to the Meyer 300 presented by Ritz and you can go to shophonda.com to sign up for a chance to start the Indy Grand Prix of Sonoma in the eyes on IndyCar two seater driven by Mario Andretti. That's right. The winner will ride during the pace lap and be on the course for the start of the Indy Grand Prix of Sonoma. Somebody's going to have a lot of fun and I'd like to ride with Mario. Oh, guarantee you pull your wig back. <laughs> Joey Logano is your race leader right now by almost a second over teammate Brad Coleman. Then on back to Justin Allgaier, Reed Sorensen, Brad Keselowski. That rounds out your top five. But one story we want to update you on. The seven of Josh Wise. He is in 11th position, but he has had an issue that doesn't happen very often, but can be very painful. Vince, take us through it. Well, it certainly has been a handful for Josh Wise tonight. The car hasn't been uh, handling just right, but then he had a headrest problem. The headrest in his car came loose, and it was creating a lot of buffeting with his head. Listen to the radio communication. Just uh, reach up there and massage your neck muscles a little bit. Get them back into where they don't cramp up on you. I know you're pretty sore. You know, it's hard enough to ride around there without no headrest. Yeah, when I was slowed down there, I literally had to put my head on the headrest, and it was like... I uh, had my head tilted sideways trying to drive for a few laps. I just had to straight left. Yeah, Wise lost a few spots during that time, too. So what were they going to do? Well, the team actually started building a new piece in the pit lane. You see the guys putting together a portion of a new headrest that they once during a Wise came in during a pit stop. They would give him the new portion of the headrest to wedge in between the old headrest and his helmet to stabilize his head. That was a major issue for Josh Wise. They lost some spots, but they have taken care of the problem. Now Wise is starting to run some better lap times. Let's get more on how this all came together with Tim Brewer in the Craftsman Tech Garage. Thanks, Vince. Inside this area right here, it's the driver's responsibility to make sure that the headrest fits him properly. But come out here. This is a seat we got from Hendrick Motorsports. It actually has Velcro here. And these guys use thin spacers, and all they have to do is literally stick the Velcro foam over to this area, and that will adjust the head back over into position that they would like because there's tremendous force on your head and your helmet going through the corners here in Kentucky. Guys? All right. Thank you, guys. Vinny? Well, and the key for Josh Wise, guys, was just the fact that his head was buffeting so much he couldn't see, and he said he couldn't then have a feel for the race car. He started dropping several spots, but they came back on the radio, pumped him up after they uh, fixed that headrest and said, before the headrest problem, you were running great lap times. Let's get back in the zone. Let's get comfortable again and start clicking them off. So keep an eye on the seven and see if he starts moving forward. Well, I love these two sitting up here next to me. They're all nice and comfortable saying, oh, man, up, uh, run without it. <laughs> I remember you had a headrest there, Mr. Wallace. Well, I had a headrest, but I only used it for a crash if I caught you know? I mean, I, mean oh boy, I don't know Josh Wise real well, but he must have a weak neck evidently oh. because, I mean, man, I don't think you'd have to lay your head against a headrest to go through the corners, especially this racetrack being so bumpy. You would think if he laid his head against the headrest, it would knock his helmet all around. But uh, I don't know. Obviously, something I don't know about down there, but... Uh, uh, Sounds to me like a story of back we'll in the days when men were men. No, I'm not, drivers I'm not going back in the day, <laughs> you trust me. But I don't know a lot of drivers that have to lay their head on the headrest to drive. Joey Logano, your race leader. Let's check the speeds at the line. Let's see who's fastest right now. So far, who do you think? Mr. Logano? Oh, Whoa, Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards. And on down through the top 13, 14, and on down. Well, Check Leffler, out Leffler there. 16th on the track, but third fastest that particular lap. So Carl Edwards, who has now moved up into sixth position, 
His next target would be Brad Keselowski who has got the 32 of Reed Sorensen squarely in his sights. So we mentioned the fact we've had Joey Logano leading now for 56 laps. Reed Sorensen has led for 49. We've had four different leaders with four lead changes and we are past halfway at Kentucky. That's what's left of Taylor Malsom's car. Our fourth caution as he has tagged the wall hard after losing control in the corner. And uh, boy, a lot, a lot of damage, but he got on the radio and told everybody he was okay. Take a look here and we'll go through it. Yeah, these two cars have been racing each other for quite a few laps. That's Coleman Presley on the outside. Like Malsom got just in the left rear of uh, Coleman Presley. Man, the car went around on him hard. He was running 15th at the time and coming off an 11th place finish last week in his nationwide series debut at Nashville. Well, he used that car up. Let's take a look at this one more time as he gets down into turn one. These two just come together at this point. It looks like Taylor's pretty high up on the racetrack. It looks like he couldn't get the car to turn down and got into the left rear. You see all the, the Goodyear markings on Coleman Presley's left rear tire rubbed off because of the collision and there's Taylor out and uh, walking under his own power as he'll make it to the infield care center for the mandatory stop 10 cars not had a lot of good luck this year the fifth DNF of 2010 fourth time in a crash so now as uh, we said we're under our fourth caution we're well past halfway Let's talk a little bit of strategy as that we talked about the fact the track is cooling a little bit. Knight has changed track conditions. If you're the crew chief on the box, what are you uh, thinking about making? Well, I'm thinking about just getting four tires right here and trying to, you know, position myself for the end of the race. And uh, if you can pull any strategy, you want to try to think about maybe at the, at the very end, if there's a few laps left, you might try a uh, two tire stop. All right, let's find out what's going to happen as we'll set up our triple pits. And Dr. Jerry Punch, you're going to be up again. And Andy, I think most of the guys agree with you. Four tires now and two in that final stop, which should come with about 20 laps to go. Reed Soares, and since his car has been very tight after the four tire stop before, he will get four this time and an air pressure adjustment. What about Brad K? Vince? Keselowski started 25th, worked his way up to 5th, but he says the car is too tight, especially in the front. It just doesn't work going into turn 3. They're going up around on the track bar and four tires. Jamie? And the other Brad said he's too loose at the start, but it gets good air pressure adjustment. Four tires and a water bottle. He lost his last one on the floorboard, Dave. Leader Logano, it is free at the start, but don't go back because it's tight at the end. Justin Allgaier goes by. Logano takes four. He's going to lose a couple of spots. They do make a wedge adjustment half round out of the left rear. Well, you're right. Justin Allgaier did get passed and uh, will take over as he came in third and is going to go out first. There he is. Two tires on the 12 car, we're told. And then you saw also Michael Annette picking up a lot of track position. He was 14th coming in, and there he is right behind the 12. Take a look at it again from the line, and you'll see there goes Allgaier. And then who's coming up next? There's Michael Annette, followed by the 20 and the 18. Stay with us. We're coming back for the restart. five-hour energy rapid recap brings you up to speed on what's happened in the first half of today's race Brad Keselowski one of five drivers making the shuffle over from Michigan here to Kentucky started 25th he has worked his way steadily up to the front running in sixth position right now Carl Edwards went backwards first yeah he really did he had a problem with the right rear tire went flat uh, gave him some problems he really struggled early but he has worked his way up to the front just like Brad Keselowski is currently is running fifth after getting that right rear chain Carl is far back is 31st at one point in the race. Joey Logano started on the pole, trying to win this race from the pole for a third straight year. He has led the most laps, but twice tonight he's been shuffled back in line by strategy on pit stops. It happened on the first pit stop earlier in the race, and it happened on this most recent one. Logano's running third in line behind Justin Allgaier and Michael Annette. So uh, Logano got to do a little more rallying to get back to the front. On this most recent caution, Scott Wimmer was the Aaron's Lucky Dog free pass, was the first driver a lap down. He gets back on the lead lap. Remember, he had uh, an unscheduled pit stop very early in the race. 
Uh, Wimmer now in 22nd position. So we go green with what will be 80 laps to go. This is an official race. We'll tell you there is some weather on the radar. It's a bit away from us. It's a race to the checkered flag, not just for these cars, but against the weather, too. <laughs> green flag. Go, Justin go, go. Allgaier, the leader. And as we come out of turn number two, heading down the back stretch, it is Justin Allgaier opening up about a tenth of a second lead over Joey Logano. A lot of action going on behind him. We can tell you there were three wave arounds. Kenny Wallace, Derek Cope, Tony Raines. That gives us a total of 23 cars on the lead lap. And you got uh, Mr. Coleman getting himself passed on both sides. You got 22 of Brad Keselowski high, the 33 of Mike Bliss down low. Tell you what, on these restarts, it's very easy to get trapped three wide in the center. You saw Coleman get locked up there. But I tell you, one thing I'm watching right now are the two cars up front that only did two tires, and that's Justin Allgaier and Michael Annette. And Michael Annette, you see going backwards a little bit, being passed by 22 car Brad Keselowski. And there's that battle continuing with the 33, Bliss. Trying to get underneath Brad Coleman. And there's Reed Sorensen. He got shuffled back in the exchange of pit stops. Restarted about eighth. And he's trying to fight his way back up. Earlier in the race, Reed Sorensen was out there about two seconds in the lead. Now he's back in traffic and uh, struggling just a little bit. All right, while all this is going on, let's check in with Vince Welch. He's caught up with Taylor. Well, the reason for the yellow prior to that restart was the uh, big hit for Taylor Malsom. What happened there in the contact with the 88? Uh, I just screwed up. I mean, I got inside of him and uh, I couldn't, you know, hold and slid up and got him. I apologize to those guys. Uh, we're just here to make laps and uh, sorry for the team. They went an awesome car today and uh, real proud of the guys. Uh, we'll go get them next week. Good to see Taylor Malsom out under his own power. No ill effects of that contact. It was a big one. It's his second was. NASCAR Nationwide Series race, Marty. It certainly was, Vince. And uh, right now, as we come back out onto the track, you can see Riggs, or I should say Bliss, still trying to duke it out as he's got now the 32 going around him so Sorensen passes Bliss moves him back another spot so Bliss when he was fighting for Coleman for six all of a sudden finds himself back in eighth Michael Annette is under pressure from Brad Coleman we're now seeing the fastest laps of the race with that weather cooling down and got fresh tires on his restart Logano has the fastest lap at 3091, and Justin Allgaier is also in the 32nd bracket at 3097. So uh, cars are really waking up here. Take a look at the top three right there on your screen as Logano's trying to reel in Justin Allgaier and Carl Edwards in third. Did you honestly think as we uh, move a little bit further back, and here is the battle with Brad Coleman and Michael Annette still going on. Coleman now in fifth. Annette drops back to sixth. And the Nets could be in trouble with those two tires because here comes Reed Sorensen. Well, you know, two tires work if the car's handling really good. And I think Michael's car might be off a little bit more than Justin Allgaier's car. Now, Justin just run a very fast lap out there. He does have that clean air. He's up front right now. And I promise you, a lot of these teams, Andy, are looking to how are those two tires working for late in the race. Yeah, because we're going to see about, if, these, if this run goes to the end, about 20, 25 laps to the finish. So that's the time you would think about taking two tires. Let's get more on Michael Annette from Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, the man who made the call for Michael Annette and those two tires are right side of your screen. That's Ryan Fugel. His nickname is Rudy. Remember the movie Rudy about the kid who just wouldn't give up and wanted to be a part of the Notre Dame football team? Well, that's Ryan Fugel's story. He came down and wanted to be a crew member. He said, you're not qualified. You're not talented enough. He volunteered. He gave did whatever they wanted him to do. He ran errands. He swept the shop. And finally, because of his unbelievable desire, he now is a crew chief at the age of 26. He said, you know what? I've been gambling my whole life, so I'm going to gamble on two tires, try to keep the track position. i got to believe there'll be more caution flags. We'll change four later, but if we can stay in the top ten, we got a good chance of finishing there. Hey, Doc, I'll tell you the truth. I mean, he came in in 14th. Even though he's been shuffled back, he's still in seventh. So, so far, the strategy is paying dividends. There are the two Roush cars going side by side. Battle for 12th between Eichler in the 6, Braun in the 16, or Brown. I get my Browns and Brawns confused all the time. <laughs> Spelled the same, pronounced differently. And there's uh, Brendan Gone right behind, and he's taking a look to the inside. Can he make it stick? 
He's got that low line. He usually likes to run up high. He's got a nose in front of Colin. Trevor Bain also looking at all this as it goes on right in front of him. I can promise you if he can get the if if they can get the Brendan Gone card at the second lane, the top of the racetrack, he'll definitely go there because he does not like running on the bottom of the track. Just can't see him get his car to run up top like it normally does. One of the things I want to throw out for you guys is we're hearing word that there is another chance of a storm coming towards us here at Kentucky Speedway. Obviously, the crews are going to know that. Crew chief, it, are you now in sprint mode? I mean, are you are you changing anything as far as strategy? No, well, 70 laps to go. I'm already in sprint mode. <laughs> it's time to start getting up to the front. If, uh, if you've got something to try to win, you want to, you know, you're looking at that weather, and uh, it might affect your decision if it happens to get closer. Right now, you're just thinking about staying on strategy. Well, we talked a little bit about the weather. Let's talk about Justin Allgaier and his team. What are they talking about, Jamie Little? Well, his crew chief, Chad Walter, has been watching the weather, made the last minute call to take two instead of four because of the weather. Chad, what are you seeing? How close do you think it is? Well, um, you know, the best stuff we got here at Penske tells us about 40 to 45 minutes. That puts us right in the range of 15 to 20 laps to go that there's a possibility for weather. Uh, really hot, really humid up here in Kentucky. Justin's been doing a really good job out front. We felt like track position was more important than getting four tires at this point, so hopefully the gamble pays off. So far, it's looking good. Joey Logano not gaining a whole lot on your leader, Justin Allgaier, Marty. He is. He's managing to hold him off, guys. Uh, two tenths of a second difference. But if you can get up front and get the lead like he did on that stop, that is worth speed. I mean, just being up there is worth speed. And he's saying, Chad Walter, the crew chief, saying that's worth as much as having four tires on the car. Caution's out. Caution is out. We've got debris. caution, debris. and we're hearing it's debris on the front straightaway here, and we're looking for it out our window. So far, haven't seen anything yet, although right up to my left, maybe, guys, uh, left of the start-finish line, maybe about uh, 150 yards. There you go. It's like a screen, Andy, out of the front of the car. I see part of the nose work. Screen. You know, this is a key stop right here because a lot of these guys have worked on these cars throughout the night, and this track temperature's cooled down a lot. These cars have changed. They've had about 10 or 12 laps right there. And now it's when the weather really does start to work on you. You think, okay, if it's really close, then what do we do? We got a chance we can come in right now, or do we stay out? And you know, I've been in this situation before where you go, you know what, that was a bad call. What we did to the car gives them a chance to undo it. And I got to believe some of these guys who did four will definitely do two right now. And some of them will probably stay out. Stay out, okay. Fifth caution on the racetrack right now. He got me on that one. I always like the pit, Marty. I'm, I'm like, bring me down pit road, baby. Put some tires on this yeah. thing, you know? Yeah, you always wanted tires. 67 laps to go. And uh, you can see the field tightening up. And the question will be... Uh, you see the crew's on the wall, so they're, they're thinking about pitting here. How many are going to be takers? How many are going to be fakers? <laughs> 67 laps. That's a little bit outside the window, but I got to yeah. believe some of these guys could make it. It'd be a stretch. Well, here they come. They're going to come. Nobody's faking there. Here comes Justin Allgaier. So let's go triple box. And, Doc, you're up again. Rusty, you're exactly right. They're about two laps shy. At least Reed Swords is making it all the way, but they're going to go ahead and come in and top it off, be fuel only. They're going to make a track bar adjustment to try to free up his Toyota. What about Brad K. Vince? Brad Keselowski taking fuel only, no tires. They're very close on their fuel window. Jamie Little, take the 12. Justin Allgaier, fuel only. That means this will be the third cycle on these left side tires. It's a quick stop for him. He's down and away, Dave. Fuel only for second place, Logano. He'll win the race off of pit road. Allgaier and then Carl Edwards, who also took fuel only. Then followed by Reed Sorensen and then the 33 of Mike Bliss. So that gives you an idea as who came out on the race off pit road. So Joey Logano, who has already led 62 laps tonight, one of our five different leaders, there you see, he is first off pit road, that number one pit box, big advantage when you're going gas and go only. The 2010 FIFA World Cup continues tomorrow on ESPN and ABC. The action begins on ESPN at 7 a.m. Eastern. Algeria faces Slovenia. 9.30 a.m. It's Serbia taking on Ghana. And then on ABC at 2 Eastern, Germany goes against Australia. Today, the USA and England tied at one apiece. Back here at the Meyer 300 presented by Ritz. Let's go back to the pit stops because a lot of action coming out of pit road as we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing. 
Well, let's shift off on that. Being told that since we're so close to going green, we don't want to miss the start for you. Up front, let's reset it for you. Scott Wimmer did not pit, so he has stayed out. And uh, it'll be Joey Logano, then Allgaier, Edwards, Sorensen, Bliss, Eichler. That is your top seven. And we're racing again with 63 uh -oh. to go. Well, look out. Somebody is going for a ride. It is the uh, six of oh, Brian Eichler. Caution, caution. So now Eichler gets turned. And I'm waiting to see if this was one of those chain reaction kind of deals where somebody checked up. Oh, Reed Sorensen. Yeah, Reed got a lot of, lot of damage that left front. And Reed's... Change the right side first. And come over to the left, fix the damage, and put the two left back on. Like Allgaier's got his right rear torn up. Well, there's Allgaier. Yeah, he's got damage. Take a look, see if... Uh, we can see what happened. You see Algar in that inside lane right there. Looks like he got in the back of Wimmer just a little and maybe missed a shift. Yeah, that car just did not go on the bottom of the racetrack. Initially took off, and then maybe when he went from second to third gear, Andy, it just didn't go. But, but watch what happens to Eichler there. So he looks, he pulls out a line and then just, yeah, Boom. like he missed, missed a shift. See Brad Coleman gets in the back of him, but there's nothing Coleman could do. No, it's just a stack up behind yeah. uh, the 12 car. Well, and Eichler had his best position of the night. He was up to seventh on the restart, and there he goes. The 12 cars got damage on the right rear. Reed Sorensen. Let's uh, ride on board with Algar. Let's just listen, see if we can hear. Ready. Ready. Oh, yeah, three flags. Outside. Definitely missed the gear. Push your line down here. Hold it on the bottom. Hold it on the bottom. Caution's out. My boy's got some damage for me right here. For whatever reason, I put it in the first. But it's really weird. It wouldn't go out of gear. Like, it wouldn't come out of second. All right, work yourself through the gears. What do we got here? I got all gears. All right, let's talk about it a little bit. I've noticed those shift levers that they use in the Pinsky car. Just one thing I don't like is a long shift lever because it just, uh, there's chances for mistakes like that. He said he felt like he went from second to first instead of second to third, and uh, it's real easy to do. Question now is, with 62 laps to go, here are two of the best cars in the field having to come down to have damage control. Is, has it basically taken them out of any chance to win? Well, I don't know if it's taken them out, but it's definitely hurt it real bad. I mean, these guys, they, like we talked earlier, they need that good clean air to run fast now they're gonna be marred way back in the field it's gonna be a tough call a yeah. tough job 24 cars on the lead lap and uh, they're gonna have to line up behind all of them with damage so it's gonna be uh, an uphill battle for sure and with Kenny Wallace getting the lucky dog it'll make it 25 cars back on the lead lap I would tell you this right rear quarter panel on the 12 cars Andy Wells knows is a very very important corner on these nationwide cars that needed for the side force to handle good they need to spend time on this 12 car and get it right because if they just patch it together, it's not going to run. Well, the six car has been a very unlucky number this year, no matter who's been behind the wheel. This is the 10th time in 13 starts that the six has been involved in a crash. The damage control continues in pit road. Stay with us. We'll reset it for you. When we come back, we'll try and go green once again. Welcome back to the NASCAR Nationwide Series at Kentucky. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. We have a great shot to show you. The guys in the truck have blown this up. Uh, it might look a little distorted, but it's going to give you an idea of what happens when your car does not like the gear that you are running in. Watch the left rear on the 12. See here, he's starting in second gear. Going to go to third, and inadvertently, right here, he goes to first gear. And you can see how it just starts yanking the drive line. For more, let's check in at the Craftsman Tech Garage, Tim. Thanks, Marty. What you have here, folks, conventional shifter and pattern, it's an H. You just go straight back to come to second gear, but like Andy says, when you started in second gear, it goes through the cross gate here, and you've got to be pushing away from it to get it in third gear. But inadvertently, he just pushed it forward, put it up in first gear. Back to the restart. And as we go green, it is still Scott Wimmer in front. Logano second, Bliss, Edwards, Bain, that's your top five. You see how Wimmer now took the outside lane on this restart. Last restart, he was on the inside. Like he might regret that decision. Here. Well, I don't know. Here we go. <laughs> Down the backstretch. They're flying. 
Here comes Bliss taking a look to the inside as well. Boy, I'll tell you what, though, Joey Logano, he is good. Three wide there as you see Sorensen trying to fight his way back after the damage control that they did in Pit Road. Battle for second, the 33 of Bliss underneath Wimmer. And don't forget, Wimmer has more top fives at this track than anybody else. He has four of them in the nine prior races, and he's up there again. Well, I can tell you one thing, with 57 laps to go, these cats are running out of time. Oh, oh no. no. Eichler. Eichler has now backed it into the wall. Oh, Jack Roush is not going to be happy. This is actually Colin oh, I'm Brown. I'm sorry, Colin Brown. Now that is, that, that's Eichler. That that yeah, it's a six. six. We have a wrong, uh, wrong font there, guys. There we go. There, there we go. Like. Tough, tough break for this team. Let's see what happened. Just up out of the groove. Yeah, he just gets way too high on the track, loses the grip. And, you know, I was about to say, Andy, I haven't seen the top groove come in at all tonight like we see a lot of these racetracks. There's just no grip up there. I'm thinking this new tire that Goodyear brought here is you can see how it's rubbered the bottom groove in pretty well. And uh, I don't, it just hasn't widened the groove out because it's taking rubber so well on the bottom. So there you see the damage on the six as he heads back towards pit road. We have 56 laps to go. It'll be the fifth DNF for the year for the six car entering tonight. here at Kentucky seven cautions that's the last one for Brian Eichler he's trying to avoid his sixth DNF of the year in the number six car let's talk about the ticket to race and all you have to do is log on to NASCAR.com slash tickets that's the schedule what I want to talk about is schedule for future for this track while everybody's looking at those dates the word is you know obviously uh, they'd like to get a cup date here they put 13 million dollars worth of renovations just in this year alone what do you think I think they'll get one I don't think they'll get it next year maybe a year after it's it's too cool to track not to have one. As we go back to green flag racing, it is Joey Logano, your race leader with Bliss right alongside. Wimmer still hanging on to third, Edwards fourth, Trevor Bain in fifth. You know what, guys? Business getting ready to pick up right now. These guys are running out of time. Oh, I hate to tell you this. I'm not trying to spoil it for anybody, but when Logano has been out in front, I don't, I don't remember anybody passing him when he's had that race lead. Especially at this track. No, not here. Trevor Bain alongside Carl Edwards. Those guys locking horns. There they are right there. You can see a little further back. Jason Leffler almost looking three wide there. Right in front of him is the 62 of Brendan Gone. There's Brad Keselowski. He is still in the mix. If we get an extended run, I want to see if Keselowski, his car's been better on the long runs. I want to see if he can reel in the race lead. Yeah, it seems like here lately, though, that runs are not long enough for that to kind of kick in for him. He's having to try to make it happen on these short runs. You see, not, not faring too well here. Brad Coleman's not faring real well right now. He's got a mirror full of people. Look out. Let's get an update on the 22, Vince. Remember, Brad Keselowski started 25th, ran all the way up into the top five, and came in fourth into a late pit stop. As you see a car get way out of the groove, that's the 18. Yeah, go slow, going. go slow. I believe it's the left rear. Right front. Marty? Step on the right front, still inside. Yeah, tough Still break for him. Two more, drop down, down, drop down, drop down. At this time. No caution, we're going to stay green. Tough break for Brad Coleman, though. They had a good run going. You can tell there was something wrong with that car from the start. Caution's out right now for debris. Yeah, some parts are flying off that 18 car. Yeah, he was seventh at the time that uh, yes, the tire yes, let yes, go. Yes, yes. He has made his way to pit road, so now we'll have our eighth caution. Boy, a lot of, a lot of damage all the way down the right side of the car. Jason Radcliffe. Your right side's on it here and get the repair done, okay? We'll come back and take left next time. Already has figured out his strategy to keep his driver on the lead lap. And again, here we are all of a sudden, bang, 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 three cautions in a quick period of time. Let's yeah, take another look. Just, uh, you know, the intensity level picking up. 
See right here, he's trying to race Brad Keselowski up on the outside. Make a little contact here on the straightaway, but you can already see damage on that right front. I don't know where he must have, he may have gotten that in that stack up that they had earlier. Now see, you see the tire let go. Yeah, you see the big spark as he hits the ground and just cannot keep it off the wall. And what was a very promising night just took a hard right. Yeah, Marty, he, he's had a great run the night. He's been doing a really good job. He's unfortunately lost the right front tire. Really no problem with himself. I know it makes him sick that that's happened. Probably the Gibbs guys also, but they, they gave this kid a good car, that's for sure. All right, let's take a look while we've got a chance at the motorsports calendar because coming up, we've got the Lucas Oil Deep Clean NHRA Super Nationals qualifying on ESPN2 at 11 Eastern tonight. And then the finals, 4 Eastern tomorrow. And then NASCAR now, 8.30 a.m. tomorrow on ESPN2. And then next week, the NASCAR Nationwide Series, the Bucyrus 200 at Road America, 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. That's going to be a good one. The inaugural race at Road America, very, very historical racetrack. I cannot wait to get up there and watch that thing run. So many strategies in road course racing and big old four mile track. Oh, man. A lot of fun. Beautiful place. I was up there last week looking at it. Just just fantastic and uh, should make for a great race. Interesting little stat came our way. We've had uh, six different leaders. Three of them have been involved in crashes today. A couple of guys coming on down while we've got a chance. Uh, let's talk to our in race reporter Joey Logano. Oh, never mind. We just got word he's turned into pit road. Okay, now we're told it was the 18, not the 20 that came down. Go ahead, Rusty, try it. Hey, Joey Logano, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? Yeah, four, I got you. Hey, Joey, it looks like the racetrack's uh, cooled off quite a bit. Has your car changed the way it's handled quite a bit? Um, I can feel it traveling a little bit more into one right now. Starting to scrape a little bit harder than what I had uh, all day here. So, um, just carrying more speed, really. Um, Balance-wise, uh, We've been pretty tight in the long haul. I think 95% of the cars have been that way. So um, we're just trying to get a good balance from the beginning of the run to the end of the run here. But uh, right now, I don't, we're not getting any further than five laps. So uh, maybe a short run car is the best. But I, I feel like our car is the best on the long haul right now. So uh, hopefully we can get some laps in. Joey, for late the races, your t team and yourself talking strategy. I mean, this, this weather's really coming at us pretty quickly. Might not get this race finished. A strategy right now is stay up front and win this thing. Uh, really, we already made our pit stops, and we, we should be good to go from here. So uh, um, if it rains and we're in the lead, good for us, I guess. But uh, we're just going to try to get this thing a victory lane one way or another. All right, buddy. Good job. Thanks for talking to us. And don't forget, he is trying to make history, becoming the first in the Nationwide Series ever to win three straight races at the same track from the pole position, the closest was Mark Martin years ago. He had two in a row, could not do it when he had the third opportunity. But he's got some challengers behind him. Mike Bliss has given that 33 a good ride tonight. Scott Wimmer's hanging on. That strategy has paid big dividends for that team. They, you know. Well, it has so far. Now, I don't know if he's got enough fuel to make it to the end if, it, if we go all the way. I think Ricky Byers was, was rolling the dice when he left Scott Wimmer out there earlier to try to maybe, you know, be out in front if it does rain. We'll see how it works out. Well, right behind uh, Carl Edwards. We'll talk more about Carl, but for, first, let's get an update from Doc. Andy, you know Ricky Byers. It's exactly what he was doing. Remember the story about people who are down to their last dollar and they go and buy a lottery ticket and they hit the lottery? Well, that's what Ricky Byers is doing. This team here is down to their final race with a sponsor. And Ricky Byers, regrettably, is leaving after tonight to go to work for Roush and said, you know what? I want to do the best I can for these guys. I'm going to roll the dice. They pitted on lap 114. They were going to have to come back in on lap 185. But with all these caution laps, it's now creeping up to 192, 193. They might just make it. And if they do, Ricky said, we're going to steal maybe a top five finish or better and if it doesn't work out for us i'll be gone next week and i'll have no one to fuss at because <laughs> i'm going to roush so anyway he's trying to do the best he can for these guys here and they're uh, down to their final dollar here as they're trying to win the lottery uh, we'll wish him luck all right thanks doc you know we were talking about carl edwards he had the tire problem earlier right now he's fought his way back to fourth and how about trevor bain in fifth remember he had the penalty for the rolling tire out of the pit box earlier in the race yeah, I mean, you look at this top uh, top six or eight cars, Logano, Bliss, Wimmer, Edwards, Bain, Gone, Menard. A lot of these guys that weren't up front are up front right now with good strategy. This track cooling down, the car's handling better. And, Andy, they've had multiple times to work in these cars to get them to handle better and better. 
Well, let's get an update on Carl Edwards' situation. Uh, Dave, I think you've caught up with his uh, crew chief. Well, and Marty, the amazing thing to me is where they came from. Drew, that car sounded like it was a mess. What fixed it? You know, we had a flat right rear. He came in, he only had 11 pounds in his right rear. We thought something might have broken under the hood. Carl thought maybe a shock or an A-frame. So we were making all these adjustments, trying to get ready to, to fix something on the front end. It was a flat right rear. So it took us two stops to get the air pressure out of the car that we adjusted for for a loose race car. Now it's real fast. We just got to see if we can get to the front and hold these guys off. All right, good luck. Vince? With Paul Wolf, he's the crew chief for Brad Keselowski. Paul, you guys came in at a fuel-only stop and lost eight positions. Did you get all the fuel in that you needed to get in, or was that a problem, too? Well, we've just we've struggled with discount tire dodge tonight, getting fuel in the car. We had some small issues, but um, we feel like we're okay. Um, not 100%, but uh, we feel like we're good enough. We're going to go for it. How close are you? Uh, I say we're within a lap or two. Marty? All right, there were no wave arounds this time. And the uh, 81 of Michael McDowell gets the lucky dog. So we now have a total of 26 cars on the lead lap. That would set a record if it holds here at Kentucky. It is Joey Logano, Mike Bliss, Wimmer, Edwards, Bain. That's your top five. Uh-oh. Look here, this 33 now, making a charge on the outside. Bliss is giving him all he wants right now. Bliss, he's got trying to take the lead, and he's going to do it. The first time tonight that Joey Logano's been passed when he's been in the lead. Yeah, he's got Carl Edwards coming also. you got to believe Kevin Harvick sitting back in Michigan right now, liking Bliss getting around that 20 car, Joey Logano. That was a nice move. Carl Edwards in the mix as well. Right behind is Scott Wimmer. Brendan Gaughan has moved up to fifth, and you can see What's jamming up behind him? Look at Michael Annette diving down the low side. We got three wide. That's Menard in the middle. Look out. Uh -oh. They're going around. Whoa. Oh, oh man. Michael Leffler, Annette. Michael Annette gets swept up. That's got the left rear pretty good. Three really got good cars. Bars. Guys, cautions breed cautions. And intensity level sky high right now with this weather coming Bring in. Bring it back to you hard right side, damn it. Laps running down. Annette was 11th at the time of this mess. Paul Menard had a great night going as well. And the 38 was involved earlier yeah, with his I'm teammate. Sure. And if you remember I then, mean, he said, I'm not going to give here. in. And if he wasn't going to give in early, he sure as heck didn't give in now. See, this is a 15 car. Annette's is a mess. Tough, tough break for Annette. That team has done a marvelous job. Let's take another look. Yeah, it looked like Jason Leffler kind of cut across the nose of Paul Menard, and that just triggers the whole thing. Everybody else manages to stay low. Here's another look view. Uh, it's like the 98 just actually got loose. You see that? Yeah, it could have been a little bit of that, too. Uh, to kind of the first look, it looked like maybe Leffler turned down, but uh, looking at that angle, it's like Paul may have uh, had to make a correction and got up in the left rear. Man, hard lick for Leffler. Well, entering today, Leffler had four DNFs. It looks like this one might be number five because that thing is hurt. And he's climbing out. I'd say Braun Racing's really had a tough night with a lot of their cars getting in wrecks. And I'll tell you what, I know how that feels. That feels horrible. I've had my cars wiped out, every one of my own, and that's a sick feeling as an owner. And Todd Braun's probably thinking the same thing right now. Well, how about Michael Annette? He had top 15 finishes in his last four races. That's the best streak he had going in his career. And uh, that's going to come yeah, down. Yeah, we tonight. definitely need to give him a shout out. Michael Annette is. Garage. Michael Annette uh, drove a great race tonight, and he's been doing that week after week in Jermaine's car. Good, solid car. We heard somebody say, take it to the garage. And I'm wondering if that is uh, Paul Menard's crew. If uh, we're checking to see whose radio it was. Bernard, of course, third last week, his best finish of 2010, and it looks like now, yes, it was his radio, and they're saying, take it to the garage. And there's Michael Annette already in the garage. A couple of good race cars with some great runs going, but this is how quickly your fate can change in this sport. Rough night at Kentucky.
Yeah, Michael back in the garage here. He's climbed out. And, Michael, it looks like the strategy was working. You guys had done what you were going to do tire-wise, and you were positioning yourself for another top-10 finish here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Rudy, he made all the right calls, and we were sitting there with four fresh tires and ready to go, and it just kind of – it looked like one car made it three wide on a track that, you know, we struggled to go too wide around here. And, you know, just got the right size up in the marbles on the two cars ahead of me, and I had nowhere to go when I got up there. Just when you get up in the marbles like that, it feels like you're on ice, and you really can't control the front tires. 13th in points. I see them working back here. They get any shot at all to get you back out? Uh, we thought we did. You know, they rushed over the drive to look at it. And, you know, they're, they're not going to quit, but it, we can't get back out there. So uh, we're going to Road America and make up the points we lost tonight. Well, the final rundown may not show, but Michael and Ned had one heck of a run going here at Kentucky Speedway tonight. Dave? And guys, right now, Ernie Cope talking to his driver, Mike Bliss, trying to give him some final instructions before we get going here. Uh, looking pretty good right now. What does he need to do to win this race? Realistically, our best chance is probably rain, but uh, he's good on the starts. We uh, we kind of missed it. We're trying a little something different here, and uh, our car's bouncing too much. He said at the beginning of the race that was probably fine. It wasn't that bad, but as the track's getting faster, you know, we're running about six, seven tenths quicker than we did at the beginning of the race. And uh, the car's bouncing really bad. And he says he can't hold it on the on the bottom as well as he could earlier in the race. But he moves up and, you know, it, uh, uh, he says it's a lot better when he moves up. So we'll see what happens. Looks like he's got a fighting chance, though. Yeah, he does. When he, when he moves up, he says it rolls the center real good. If he just, uh, he says when he backs the corner up, he, you know, it's it, it doesn't bounce as bad and he can keep it down. But uh, we miss uh, kind of on our timing on our front springs there. And uh, it's kind of bouncing a little bit. So it's He's, he's struggling with that. He's struggling, but it's been pretty good for a car that earlier he described felt like it was on marshmallows. I guess that's where the bouncing comment relates, huh, Marty? Well, Mike Bliss won here back in 2002 in the Truck Series. How about the Nationwide Series? His last win back at Charlotte Motor Speedway, May 23rd of 2009. It's been 36 starts since. And uh, he was in that number one car at the time. And we had weather, and it got soaking wet and didn't bother him at all to celebrate indoors. He wouldn't mind it tonight either. And it may happen again as the rain is approaching. Now, it is Bliss, Logano, Edwards, Wimmer, and gone. Let's uh, call, catch up with uh, Jamie Little. She's caught up with Jason Leffler. Well, it's been a tough couple of weeks for Jason Leffler. You have been checked and released. That's the good news. You're okay. What happened from your perspective? You were ahead of what was actually going on. Yeah, I mean, um, Doug the spotter called three wide and you know, when he called three wide I was already hit and spun out it's just um unfortunate you know it's uh getting near the end of the race so everybody's going and um, no one's gonna lift so it's part of racing you know I haven't seen the replay well I just seen it right there and um, just three cars all in one spot so uh, it's uh it'd be easy to get mad there but I, I did the same thing to my teammate on the first lap so I can't really be too mad and um, just part of racing at the end of these deals you know you got to go Thanks, Jason. This team had a penalty for swapping tires with their teammate last weekend. They are going to appeal it, but Jason Leffler told us earlier today he does not expect his crew chief to be at the next two races. All right, thanks for the update, Jamie. And a, an interesting comment that, you know, we had his radio earlier in the race, and uh, so he said, I can't get too mad. I did the same thing. Yeah, well, at least he's uh, kind of call it like he sees it. It just, like you said, it's just three cars racing hard, and it happens And when you get down to the end of these races. Guys, the, one of the guys I want to talk about right now, Scott Wimmer. Rem remember, he had a lucky dog on the fourth caution, stayed out when he was 18th, and that put him into the race lead. He's still hanging on to fourth, and with all these cautions, I think he's got enough fuel yeah. now to go. They were rolling the dice and gambling that it would rain and they wouldn't uh, make it to the finish, the race would, and they'd have enough fuel to make it that far. Now it looks like they might make it to the end with all the caution laps we've run. I think the probably the only thing he'd have to worry about with 37 laps to go and that car being almost out of gas at the end, Andy, will the car get too tight? We'll start sliding the front end and the handling go away because that's what happens when these guys start running that out of fuel. That was a gamble. He was already back there anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, let's update you. It will be Brad Coleman getting the lucky dog. Gives us 23 cars back on the lead lap. And let's talk to his teammates, crew chief of Joey Logano, Dave Burns. Yep, that would be Kevin Kidd. And uh, he was just 
just racing the weather. Now he's racing Mike Bliss. But Bliss had such a strong restart on the outside. Uh, where do you hope you get to restart? Uh, either side. We'll be fine. <laughs> I think right. I think Joey, uh, you know, he probably just didn't have the, quite as good a restart as we've had for most of the night right there. But, uh, you know, right before the caution came out, we were in the process of getting Bliss black. Uh, you know, we've had a pretty good car all night. Um, it's definitely not over. We're racing the weather. We're racing our, you know, competitors on the racetrack. Uh, you know, but we've had a pretty good game stop Toyota, and, um, you know, I think we'll be okay. Should be a good race. Marty? Well, let's listen to the radio conversation and get a little more idea of how important it is to get up front. Joey, uh, more weather stuff here. Uh, you're going to laugh at me when I say this, but uh, every opportunity you get to be in that lead, you need to get there. Could do a lot of stuff, but it's definitely coming. So I'm saying 30 minutes might be sooner than that, might be a touch later than that. Hard to say, but get after it is what I'm telling you. Four. Don't forget the race, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I know. The reference there, of course, to all the recent cautions. We've been uh, hitting with a flurry. And now it'll be a question as when we'll be going back to green, because you see the lights are still on. They're still making the cleanup. You see the trucks. Now let's uh, catch up with Paul Menard. Uh, Doc, you've got him. Yeah, his damaged car back in the garage area, and he was hoping to have another top five finish. He's climbed out over here talking to Matt Pusha. And Paul looked like you were positioning yourself for back-to-back -back top fives. Uh, what happened? Uh, we, we've just been really tight all night, um, extremely tight. We made a really big swing at the last stop. Got a lot better and uh, just just racing hard. Got caught in the middle and uh, I guess they didn't know. I don't think Jason knew that we're three wide and and Steven made a pretty not not a very smart move there. But um, it is what it is. We're just racing hard and uh, not a whole lot left to go. There's rain coming, so we had to go. All right, Paul Menard, six ten points. They wanted to fix it, but they just can't. So he is done for the evening. All right, thanks, Doc. We're going to take a quick break before we go back to green flag racing here. And uh, we'll be back to find out if we beat the rain and get the entire race in. It's been a tale of two races tonight here at Kentucky Speedway. Take a look at this. The first 133 laps, we had a total of four cautions. In the last 32, we've had five. And you see the lights still on on the pace car because the safety crews are still out cleaning up the mess from our last multi-car incident. And as a take a look at the top 10, uh, we got a, a mixed bag of the manufacturers. We've got uh, Toyota, Chevrolet, a couple of Fords, and then a couple of more Toyotas. I mean, everybody's in the mix this time. But yet when you look at the season long standings, everybody's won a race except the Ford camp. And their best chance seems to be right now combination of Carl Edwards and Mr. Wimmer. Well, we all know Carl Edwards can get aggressive when he needs to get aggressive, and uh, he's had a strong car. I mean, the thing, it looks to me like this 60 car just gets getting stronger and stronger as the night goes on. He's probably in his best shape he's been all night long as far as handling. Well, let's find out what the other Ford contender on the 27, Doc. Well, Ricky Byers, you made a gutsy call, pitted on 114. How close are you now to making it without having to come back in? Well, with all these cautions, we're only about three laps short. Um, you know, we, we got off to a bad start with that, thought we had a flat tire. So we had to do something quite a bit different to try to get some track position. And as you can see, Scott's doing a great job up front. And uh, we're hoping for maybe one more caution or maybe even rain coming. I've been watching the radar, and rain's not for that far out. And you guys have one set of uh, stickers left if you need them. Yeah, I mean, if we have a caution here another 20 laps, I got a set of stickers that nobody else has, so that's got to be an advantage, too. So it ought to be pretty exciting. That should make it very interesting, Marty. Well, and I, I don't want to spoil everybody else's day, but the last green flag stretch was less than 20 laps in seven of the nine prior Kentucky races. So what we've seen here is just a precursor of probably what we're going to continue to see. <laughs> I hope you got a good short run car. Oh, I'll tell you, it, it, this is going to be interesting. Lights are finally out on the pace car. Again, let's reset it for you. It's Bliss, Logano, Edwards, Wimmer, and gone. That's your top five. Then Bain, Brad Keselowski, Stephen Wallace, Sorensen, and Scott Riggs round out your top ten. Remember when Riggs was a lap down? Got back on the lucky dog, and here he is in tenth. Bliss has chosen the high side on the outside, and as they come down the front stretch, we're back to green flag racing with now 32 laps to go. Oh, look at gone on the inside of Carl Edwards. 
They're trying four wide further back also. Somehow everybody sorted it out, at least for now. Brendan Gaughan jumps up and gets into the third spot. Joe Logano is able to clear Mike Bliss. So Logano gets the lead from Bliss. Gone gets around. Here comes Edwards underneath Wimmer. Wimmer's older tires may be finally giving up the ghost here. Trevor Bain also, and there's Brad Keselowski. Look out, this could get real dicey. Oh, yeah. You gotta believe that the adrenaline is sky high right now. They're absolutely out of time. Like I said earlier, they know the weather's coming. And Marty, I've seen this picture before. These guys are driving to their max right now. Check out Reed Sorens, that 32 car. Now he's got it all banged up coming up through there. He's seventh already. Doing everything he can. And remember, he at one point was at the tail end of the lead lap because of all the damage that he had. But all these cautions have allowed him to cycle back through. And there he is right on the back bumper of the 27. What a comeback for Sorensen. A little bit further back, there's Keslowski on the high side going around the 99 and now putting pressure on the 32. Oh, oh got right. the front front and the 33 of Bliss. Running in second place into the wall. Our 11th caution, a new record here tonight with 30 laps to go. And deck lid tore up. Got to beat the deck lid down. Put four tires on that thing. That was totally unexpected. I, I don't, I'm trying to see exactly what may have caused it. Saw quite a bit of racing behind these cars, but I thought it uh, looked like the leaders were single file. Oh, he's got the damage. I mean, at least he's able to drive it in. They're going to pound it out. You heard him on the radio. Pound it out, put some tires, send him back out, get the best finish that they can. He drops all the way back to 23rd. There's only 23 Fender, cars. Right rear quarter panel, left rear quarter. Get the deck lit down. 23 cars on the lead lap. There he is all alone. Oh, car turned right. You know, they have really struggled with this car all day. Qualifying that we saw how harsh that this car rode the bumps, and we just heard Ernie Cope saying that they kind of missed the setup a little bit with the way their front springs were, or, sit, or the car was sitting down the front springs. I think that the higher speeds and, and the way these guys are really up on the wheel that just finally got away from Mike Bliss. It looks like right before that happened, Andy, I saw sparks fly from underneath that car. And when he bottomed out, let's watch. See the sparks there? Hitting hard. Lose his grip. So the cooler the track gets, the higher the speeds are, and the more these cars travel when they hit those bumps, and it's just causing more and more trouble all night. Well, the 33 had top 10 finishes in 12 of the prior 13 races in 2010. It's not going to happen tonight because they're going to have to spend some time fixing that deck. Well, we're getting down to the end of this thing, Rusty, and your car, one of your cars runs second. Well, I'm keeping my mouth shut, man. <laughs> <laughs> not getting nervous, are No, I, I don't. I'm just uh, hoping we get this thing in without no rain. 28 laps to go. Uh, Jason Keller's going to get the lucky dog. He's actually two laps down. He'll get one of those laps back. So we'll have 23 cars still on the lead lap, and it will be Joey Logano, followed by Brendan Gaughan, Carl Edwards, Wimmer now fourth, and Sorensen fifth. All right, let's uh, hear from uh, the guy who's calling the shots for Brendan Gaughan, Jamie Little. And that would be Brad Parrott. And I just want to note, all of these tents have been torn down. Everybody's feverishly working to pack up these tents for the weather. But Brad, you guys got luck on your side, a fast race car, and he's restarting like nobody's business. What do you think? Does he have anything for the 20? Well, I sure hope so. You know, this App Circle Pro, uh, Toyota, South Point, uh, everything that goes along with our sponsors. Thank the sponsors. Uh, thank every pe everybody that's been a part of this program all year. Everybody at the shop, the Fab Shop. This is a brand new race car. Unfortunately, it was, or excuse me, fortunately, it was built where the leader's car was built at Joe Gibbs Racing. And that's the great technology partnership we have with Joe Gibbs Racing. Thank you guys for building us a great race car. Now uh, it's up to Brendan to go get them. First gear restarts have been awesome for us tonight. I don't know what Carl's finger was out the window. Maybe we can tell him later which one it was. But, uh, you know, we'll just go do our job. That's what we're here for. That's been the secret, starting in first gear, Marty. Oh, well, we've had first-time winners in three of the last four Kentucky races, but that guy in the 20 car, remember, he has got two in a row at this track, going for three. All right, let's look at the manufacturer battle right now because you can see that you've got uh, Toyota running first, second, fifth, seventh, and eighth. 
You've got a Ford running in third and fourth. And then the Dodge in sixth. Uh, let's check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Trent Owens, explain how this happens. You guys uh, have a damaged left front hole in the nose. You come in twice, have to restart 23rd, and now you're fifth with just uh, about 25 left to go. Do you have something for the top four? Uh, it's going to be tough. Uh, looks like some of the damage we got hurt our straightaway speed some, but, uh, you know, Reed's done an excellent job tonight. Uh, obviously, we had a great car here in the beginning, leading some laps. That was good for us. So, uh, We'll do the best we can with our Dollar General Camry and, and hopefully have something for them. But the, the 20, uh, 20 is going to be tough to beat, even with clean fenders. So, uh, but, you know, it's 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 amazing job the crew did just to get it back in the top five. And uh, hopefully uh, we can finish that off and, and finish somewhere in the side top five. Great comeback for Reed Sorensen as we're getting ready to go green, hopefully for the final time, Marty. He was involved in an accident back on 138. He ran as low as 26, and as you pointed out, there he is in the top five, side by side. Boy, Brendan gone right up next to the 20 of Joey Logano, and we go back to green flag racing. Hold your breath. Maybe we'll get a couple more laps in. 26 to go. Carl Edwards in third, right behind him. There is Sorensen trying to tuck up underneath. Hey, He's got to run here. Brendan gone down the back stretch. Is he going to take the one. lead? Can he get him clear? If he can clear him, he can hold on to it, but he can't clear. Oh, look at Joey Logano drive it down in the corner. Look at Brendan gone, man. Thinking, he is wheeling that car. Come on, and come Brendan on. gets the race lead. There you go. So Brendan gone. Looking for his first nationwide series win. Now has the race lead with 25 to go, and he's opened up a little bit of ground on Logano. But here comes Joey. He's got to run on the outside. Not going to get him this corner. Down the back stretch. Carl Edwards trying to get his Ford into the mix. Brad Keselowski has moved up to fourth. Tell hey, you what, Brendan Gaughan has got to be one of the best out there when it comes to shifting. He, he does some fantastic Oh, he had turns. to get out of the throttle coming off a of four. Joey Logano gets the spot now, gets the lead. And he's going to be in jeopardy of losing second to Carl Edwards. Lose the momentum, lose two spots. And here comes Brad Keselowski. Keselowski's on the high side. Brendan gives him just enough room. Here comes Keselowski. So all of a sudden, he hasn't cleared him quite yet, but Brendan gone goes from first to fourth. And that tore up car, Reed Swords, is working really good on the bottom right now. Even with all the damage, you see Reed coming by and Wimmer right behind him, about out of fuel, low on fuel. They think they can make it, maybe. So Joey Logano back in control of the race. 23 laps to go and the rain not far off. Edwards now second, Keselowski third. Do you see a familiar scenario here? It took this long, but here are the double duty drivers right back up front. It's like they're driving along looking at their watch and said, okay guys, it's time to go. Like I can't ride right now. We're not points racing right now. Now we're racing for the win and we're out of time. Let's rock and roll dudes, get the lead out, hammer down. And they have stretched everything out. You can see the top three. Now top four. The best battle is for fourth because here comes Reed Sorensen taking a look at Brendan gone. Brendan seems to have regrouped after the one bobble cost him the momentum. All of a sudden there's Scott Wimmer. Now remember Wimmer is on tires that are ancient compared to everybody else. I'll tell you Brendan's ab circle car is just really looking good tonight. But you know while we're talking about that I'm watching the lap speeds of Joey Logano and Carl Edwards and actually that time by Carl Edwards was actually faster than Joey Logano. Brad Keselowski is actually faster than both of them. <laughs> well and here you are the two former winners of this race at Kentucky are running one two. Two wins for Joey Logano for the last two years, and then it was Carl Edwards back in 2005. Let's check speeds at the line this time by. Keselowski second. Logano fastest. All the way through the top 19, 20 cars. These guys are spread out pretty good right now. I don't see anybody side by side, so now they just need to lay down some good fast laps hit their marks every lap battle for eight remember when justin allgaier was in trying to fix his wounded dodge he has fought his way back into the top 10 again another guy taking advantage of all these late race cautions and he just kept picking people off on each restart 
And that right rear quarter panel on the 12 car is definitely damaged, hurting the way this car is handling. We were talking earlier about how it's moving around, Andy. Yep, they've worked on it and worked on it. All these stops they've made, it looks pretty decent. I mean, the car is running well. It's amazing they've been able to, to get up this far. He's running ninth right now. There you see a cycle. He was as low as 26th after the contact. Trevor Bain right in front of him. See Justin trying to work the top side of that racetrack. We talked all year long. There's a lot of momentum up there. If you can make it work. And right now he's attempting to work that thing, getting into turn three, especially to try to get that momentum going. Here he goes again. Look at how much horsepower that car looks like it has when he gets it going on the top side of the track. Trying the outside, can't get there. Stays close. He's gonna give him a run here in turn three and four, though. Here it comes. Can he make it stick this time? Coming out of the corner, he may have him. If he can clear him, he's got the spot. As they come to the stripe, he's got him. Clear. So move Allgaier up to eighth. Remember, he finished fourth last week. They've been trying to turn it around. After the big win at Bristol, the performance fell off, and the results weren't as good as they wanted. And all of a sudden, here they are bouncing back, especially tonight after some diverse adversity. Okay, let's go back to the front because it, nothing's really changed, but we want to show you how the pattern is established. There's Joey Logano. His lead is a half a second over Carl Edwards. Then you drop back to Brad Keselowski. Remember, his car's better the longer the run. That seemed like yesterday. But if Brad gets a long run to the end of this race, maybe he can reel him in. In fourth place, Brendan Gaughan has got his hands full. That's the best battle we have for fourth with Reed Sorensen closing down once again. And they're just going to have to search around right now, so try to get the top side of the track to work, work the bottom, whatever it takes to get these cars handling the best right now, because they're not racing side by side. They can afford now to move around a little bit and try to pick up the speed. Just like we saw Justin Allgaier, he went to the top of the track. It worked for him. Hasn't been working all night long. Well, with only 15 laps to go, it's working for Allgaier now. Well, and right behind this, remember, Scott Wimmer's crew chief, Ricky Byer, said we needed about three more laps of caution. So far, he hasn't gotten those three laps. There he is, top of your screen. But they may run into fuel issues here in the last closing laps. There'll be 13 to go next time by. What's the latest on the 27, Doc? Well, just talking with Ricky a moment ago, he says he just told his driver, Scott Wimmer, that we are exactly one lap short. He said, whatever you can do, they're telling him how much distance he has between him and the seventh place car of Stephen Wallace. Says, save whatever you can save, draft anything that moves. Right now, we are just over one lap short of making it. Well, he's got a 1.4 second lead over Stephen Wallace. And now it's actually, yep, still at 1.4 seconds. So if he can breathe the throttle a little bit, maybe he can save it. So as we move a little bit further back, how about if we check in on Colin Brown? Because it has been a tough season on this kid. And right now, he's running in the 12th position, Jamie. Very solid effort for Colin Brown. Marty, as you mentioned, it's been a tough season. He's had five DNFs. He was pulled out of the car, has not been in it four of the last five races. The goal tonight, finish the race. As simple as that seems, they cannot afford to wreck another car. Right now, he's just hanging on, working with a different crew chief tonight. And next week, he will be working with yet another crew chief in Ricky Byers, who's working on the 27 tonight. Vince? Well, and how about a shout out to the 04 of Jeremy Clements, just his fifth nationwide series start. There you see him in the yellow car right behind the 16. He was 19th last week at Nashville. This is his first race here at Kentucky Speedway. They've uh, changed the spring rubbers, track bar, air pressure, a little bit of everything to get him going, but he has hung in and dug all night long. And Jeremy Clements started 15th, been running good all night long. Good showing from the young guy. And your eyes are not deceiving you. That is Boudreaux's butt pace on the car. They have been uh, involved in NASCAR racing off and on for quite a while. And they're back on the 04, and they're getting a good run tonight from Jeremy Clements. How about Josh Wise there in the seven? As uh, he too has uh, been working his way back up through the field. And there's Brad Coleman, another one of those victims from uh, one of our multiple cautions. Going around Scott Lagacy. That is uh, Lagacy in 14th. Coleman now up to 13th. Josh Wise in 15th. 
And right behind them is Brian Eichler, also involved in an altercation earlier tonight. So a lot of these cars coming back. Yeah, well, somebody else coming back. Looks like Carl Edwards starting to ease up to the back bumper of this 20 car. Last few laps, he's uh, he's trying to a little different groove, and he's found a little bit. Yeah, look, he runs off the corner better than Joey. Oh, here he comes. Whoa. He's got to run now. He's got to commit to the top side of that racetrack and just stay working it because that's where he's going to pass. That's where he's going to get that run to pass him, it looks like to me, guys. They both clear Eric McClure. That's Robert Richardson coming up next. And several lap vehicles. Eight more times, eight. You got uh, the 73 in there as well, Derek Cope. Richardson gives plenty of room. They both make it through. For Edwards, 11 of his 25 Nationwide Series victories have come on tracks that the Sprint Cup Series does not compete on. So he's done well on what we would call the, the standalone tracks. And can he pick up his second win here tonight? He might have something for Joey. That's made that big run there. And he, he, four or five laps in a row there. He beat Joey Logano. Carl has one victory here at Kentucky. Joey has two in a row. They are the only two former winners in the field tonight of 43. And here comes Edwards once again, closing the gap. Got another good run off turn two. No lap traffic this time to worry about. Down into three. Boy, Edwards can Joey. hold that low line. Yeah, you see Joey moving up, trying to block his line right there. And that's a great thing to do. I'd be doing the same thing. I mean, Carl has been working the top side of the racetrack. Joey's went up and broke his rhythm right there. Carl said, heck with it, I'm going to bottom. Right here's where Carl's been strong, though. He's right through this corner. He's moved up that half a lane, and he gets a good run off this corner. Looks like Joey's got too much of a lead to get him this time. Five and a half laps to go. That's Deb Logano, Joey's mother. She can't even afford to look right now. Coming to five laps to go, Carl Edwards is giving it everything he's got. See, right there, just getting out of the groove. He's trying to just almost too hard. I think if Joey can, you know, block his line, stay on the top side of the racetrack, make the top side work, he can hold off Carl. But if he just leaves it wide open on the top, it could be trouble for him. Well, remember the nationwide dash for cash. Joey Logano is the only driver not eligible for that $25,000 bonus. He's not worried about that. He's looking at history. If he can hold on, he wins three straight races at Kentucky, all three starting from the pole. No one's ever done it in series competition. Carl Edwards, well, he just wants to get his first win of the season and second here at Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, Carl wants a right to ship, don't you think? I mean, they've had some problems uh, all year long getting this car handling good. Last week was a great run for this team. And tonight, I got to say, they're back. They're definitely back, but Carl wants more. He wants the trophy. He's got four laps to do it. Well, we've seen Carl in races prior, those bonsai moves where he'll literally slide it right up the wall, actually carry him off the wall. We've seen it happen. Does he do it here? And there we go. Got lap traffic involved now. Now, this may play a factor in this race. Jason Keller in the 35. Which way do you go? And it looks like he'll take the high side. So Carl goes around. Here's more lap traffic. The 81. It's Michael McDowell. Still more lap traffic ahead. And the laps continue to wind down. Carl has to try and get the lap traffic. Could give him a little boost here because he's lost a little bit of ground. Yeah, Joey Logano is doing a great job I'm in this lap traffic. Point. Like he's got too much lead now for Carl to overcome. The 87 of Joe Nemechek gives way. Two laps remaining here, separating Joey Logano from history. He said it just two years ago when he won at the youngest age ever for a nationwide series victor. And now he may make another page of history. He has led up to this moment 104 laps. Here he comes. White flag, one more, white flag, one more. Clear by six, no pressure. White flag and one more circuit of this mile and a half oval at Kentucky Speedway. It looks like we're going to beat the weather, but nobody looks like they're going to beat Joey Logano. Nobody's ever beaten him at this track. Oh, man, he just picked it up right there to just outrun Carl Edwards by two-tenths of a second. Joey just ran one of his fastest laps of the night just then. It's like he just put that baby in afterburner and took off just then. Get your cameras ready because here comes history. Joey Logano wins three straight from the pole at Kentucky. Second place to Carl Edwards. Brad Keselowski will come off a distant third. Now, baby, fight! 
Finally. Then Brendan Finally. Gone. Three for three in Kentucky. Yes. Joey had led over 400 laps this year, but had yet to win. But he does it now. Oh, Look awesome. at that smile Thank God. on Kevin Good Kidd. Job, guys. Awesome car. Scott Wimmer's car made it to the Maybe finish. Maybe work for it a little bit. That was cool. <laughs> Jamie? Well, you hear Joey Logano saying, finally, finally, because in 10 starts, you guys hadn't won a race yet, Kevin. First race win together. How did you guys dominate here once again? Uh, it's all Joey Logano. This kid, uh, you know, he gets around this place pretty good, and uh, he's got it figured out. Uh, we were just fortunate enough to have a good car to, to let him go out there and do his thing, but uh, he's the man at this place. What were those last few laps like, knowing the 60 was closing? Uh, hey, 60 gave us a fight. I was worried. I really was. Uh, but I knew Joey was uh, pretty hungry to get the victory lane, so uh, he, he had a little more there at the end. Congratulations. Three wins in a row for Joey Logano. His mom, Deb, is here. Dad, Tom Logano, is not. Marty? All right, and uh, we have got been told that the severe weather is uh, imminent. I mean, it could be pretty wicked, and uh, so we may be going off the air here pretty quickly, folks. Uh, so forgive us if uh, we don't uh, get everybody that we normally interview. We like to try and get the top five on air, but uh, we are told that the, this storm, when it does hit, is going to be uh, pretty mean. So uh, we're going to watch the fireworks, and hopefully if we can get a quick word from Joey if he makes it to victory lane. And, yes, we're, we're going to hang on to at least talk to Joey. And let's uh, check in. There's Carl. Let's talk to him, Doc. Carl Edwards climbs out. Carl back to back. Second place finishes. And to quote Rusty Wallace, he said, after the run you put in the last two weeks, in his opinion, Roush Fenway is back. What do you think? Yeah, it feels really good. And after, uh, I'm sure Joey's had a long week. And he deserved that win. You know, he worked really hard. And I, I had him I had him on that high line, man. I I, uh, I was up there. I thought, man, I hope they're not telling him what I'm doing. But I know they were. And, uh, and he got back up there. I got to thank uh, FanHouse.com and uh, Copart. They got a great online auction. And uh, Bass and all. And Ford, man, I, I, I'm excited to go back there to, to Michigan tonight. I think we got a great Affleck fusion for tomorrow. But um, I want to say get well to Dave Bentledge. But... Um, that's close. That's close. Jack Rouse certainly has reason to smile. So does Carl Edwards. Let's uh, check in with Vince. Well, the points leader, Brad Keselowski, had a, a full night. He started 25th, drove up into the top five, then lost eight spots in the pits on a fuel-only stop, still drove up to third. Did you ever think maybe you're going to have a shot at Carl and Joey for the win? Yeah, maybe another caution or something, you know, just to bunch it up. Just uh, one of those days and uh, came away and brought home a solid finish for a discount tire uh, Dodge Charger here. So uh, just keep plugging away, solid finishes. Uh, trying to make no mistakes uh, as a driver and uh, get a solid finishes like this and, and keep that points lead. And Carl finished one spot in front of us, but uh, if we keep finishing top fives every week, uh, there's no way they'll catch us. So uh, something to be proud of to take away from a day where we were just a little bit off. Brad Keselowski, still the points leader, Marty. He's uh, leading by 272 over Carl. Third place now is Justin Allgaier, 313 behind. So as uh, we quickly go to victory lane, David, it's all yours. Gets the steering wheel out. And jumps off to the congratulations of his crew. And the crowd just a minute ago was chanting Joey, Joey, and I heard him call three times before the race started. And now you've done it, Joey. How does it feel? Three poles, three wins in a row here at Kentucky. Oh, man. I don't know if it feels better getting three for three here or finally getting a win this year. We've uh, had quite a few stolen and... Uh, Carl was running hard there at the end. I was like, man, I don't want to lose another one this way. So, uh, man, it just feels awesome. I got to thank GameStop and the whole, the whole 20 team, Kevin Kidd. Uh, man, it's, it's awesome. I, 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 I'm speechless right now. I, I felt like I needed a win here for a long time, and uh, I'm pretty pumped up about it. You talked about Carl. There were a couple times close to the end there when the race was not yours. Brendan got around everybody, and then Carl pressuring you, and Mike Bliss. So you had a lot to overcome. Yeah, my, my restarts, like the first lap, I wasn't up to speed real good. And then after that, I was able to make something happen with this car. So uh, clean air was a big deal. And, uh, man, the last 25 laps, I was going for all I had. I know Carl was, too. He had a real good car. So um, it's interesting where to play it out, but uh, I'm glad the rain held off. So that was a uh, pretty cool win this way. Congratulations, Joey. Crucci, Kevin Kidd told me this morning nobody drives this place like Joey. He is the X Factor, and he showed it again tonight, winning again at Kentucky. All right, David, thank you. And uh, from here, 
The Nationwide Series on to uh, a first-time place. It is the Bucyrus 200 on the four-mile Road America Road Course in Wisconsin. Our coverage ESPN2 next Saturday at 3 Eastern time. And don't forget Game 5 of the NBA Finals. Lakers, Celtics, ABC, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Coverage starts with GMC Sierra NBA Countdown on ABC at 7.30 Eastern. That is tomorrow. Up next, Sports Center. More on the USA's draw with England in the World Cup. A little preview of the NBA Finals and more. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. After a headline-filled week, Logano wins in Kentucky.